Okay, so this is the Mibi. Mibi no longer of Trog, Minotaur Berserker of the Shining One. I said last time that if you press Control O, you can get to the dungeon overview, and you can see that Trog is still very upset with us. It's very dangerous to have Trog mad at you, so you need to be extremely careful while his wrath is active. Eventually that will go away, and you will not be hated by Trog anymore, and he'll stop sending guys to kill, kill you, he'll stop making you pass out, he'll stop causing you problems, but um, for now he's very mad, and Wrath is essentially unsurvivable at a low level, so don't even think about switching gods typically. Under normal circumstances, don't think about switching gods until the game is almost done. And in fact, it's never 100% safe to abandon Trog, uh, because he can make you paralyzed for a while. Um, so, like, there is a small but very real chance of, like, instant death uh, if you if you abandon Trog. It's very, very unlikely, but it is possible. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to safely abandon Trog, though, as safely as is possible, you really want to have really good defenses, which we have. Perhaps an ability to, like, blink or teleport away very quickly. We have scrolls of blinking, because he'll dump raging things on your head. But we're well past the point of caring, really, because we're such a strong character. These great defenses, great everything, really, and our broad acts of holy. All right, and I've been training invocations. You really want to take this, I mean, very rarely will I be able to say, look, here's your skills and this is what you should get. But pretty much every game, except for this axis, you should only take that to 18. I took it further because of the manual. But otherwise, on a MIBI, you can pretty much follow this exact skilling guide. You can do almost exactly what I did. Um, except for the long blades, which I trained a little bit because I found a great artifact. Um, so you take axes to 18, and you'd take fighting, armor, dodging shields to where, to where their values are now. And you could do that almost every single game on a MIBI, uh, and then take evocations up as well, and probably not go wrong. It's not going to be that that uh, sort of prescribed on other characters, but on this one there's a lot of, uh, a lot of wiggle room, really. Um, so you can kind of do what you want, um, and you can kind of do the same thing every game and have it not go badly. But when you go to the extended part of the game, when you're ready to switch to the Shining One, if you want to do your 15 runes, that's when you really want to start training invocations. You need to get this very, very high. Uh, and the reason is because Cleansing Flame makes an explosion that does damage based on your invocations. Also, the success rate is based on your invocations. So it's very good. We cleared out Crypt, which typically I would have done um, before going to Zot, but because I wanted to worship the Shining One and get his piety real high, we went ahead and saved that because he had a lot of undead uh, to kill in that in that branch, and that makes TSO very happy. My piety is full. That allowed me to brand a broad axe or any weapon really with Holy, which does an enormous amount of damage to undead and demons, anything uh, super evil like that. Um, it also gave plus two to the weapon, but it can only go up to plus nine. I'm still carrying my broad axe of chopping because Holy Wrath does nothing extra to things that are not undead or demons. So we will swap between the two, and as long as they're on the, the spots, uh, the item slots A and B, lowercase, you can press, um, the quotation mark to switch between them without having to go to your W wield menu. And uh, you'll mostly see me using Holy in the Extended, because almost everything is either undead or a demon, but not everything. Anyway, um, so we cleared out Crypts, and we see that we actually have a lot of runes to get. Abyss is not considered post-game content, but I like to save that for last, and I'll explain why later. Uh, Pandemonium, some people consider it to be easier than Hell. I'm going to explain the difference between the two now. Uh, Pandemonium is a portal, uh, if I do control F panned, it'll show me all the portals. We happen to get one in Orc 2, although you really should never enter that. Um, so usually you'll only see it in depths. You enter into it and then you cannot leave Pandemonium until you find a way out. There's two kinds of exits. One leads to the Abyss, uh, which once you clear, once you leave the Abyss, then you're actually out of Pan and you're back in the real dungeon. And one is just a straight up exit to the real dungeon. Uh, so you're essentially trapped in Pan, and floors of Pandemonium can be very dangerous, and I'll explain more about it later, but basically, e even though the actual monsters there probably are slightly easier on average, 
I like to do Hell first. Um, and I save Tomb for last, typically, because Tomb is just a whole different can of worms. So let's go into Hell. Hell looks like this. Uh, this says a gateway to Hell. There's going to be a few of these. If I search for Hell, Control F Hell, it'll show me all the different gateways. They're usually only in depths. Um, we will just go down like we're going downstairs, so right, carrot. So we go in, and uh, you get you go into this place called the Vestibule. Welcome to hell, it says. Please enjoy your stay. First thing you're going to see is you're going to see Garyon, uh, possibly the worst tile in the game. If you zoom in on him, you're going to see that he has three heads, and it looks really wacky, but from far away, he looks okay. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like to stay as zoomed out as possible on my tiles, actually, because then, uh, you know... You don't have to see the uh, bad the bad tile work as, as much. Um, anyway, so there will be monsters around sometimes, but this time we got lucky and it's just Garyon. Uh, he has a reach attack. He can hit me like he had a uh, pole arm, even though he doesn't. So if I was here, then he would be able to attack me. He also is able to summon Hell Beasts, and he has a lot of hit points. We're just going to go kill him, though. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and use Divine Shield. So A, A. You notice my SH is now light blue and way bigger. So it's 44 now. That's enormous. Drinks a potion. Garyon suddenly seems more resistant. That's not going to help him. Okay, let's walk right up to him and kill him. And we are very strong with this axe, so we're going to do enormous damage to him. He summoned one of these hell beasts. Um, these can do pretty good damage, and they can shove you around. So I could leave Vestibule whenever I want, just by taking this gateway back to the dungeon. But these can shove you off as they attack you, just like dragons. So it's something to keep in mind. Hey, Artagas! Thank you for the sub, my friend. It's good to see you in the stream. Artagas is from Eastern Europe, so... Uh, the time zones are usually not great... ...for us to... Uh, for him to catch my streams. Tomb is pain, and GMAT says it's true. Anyway, we're just gonna kill Garyon. Um, now, if you're a less powerful character, you can still do this, as you're not going to have as easy of a time. Um, if you get if you get this layout, it's actually, this is what I consider to be the very best layout of Vestibule, because if you have a digging wand, which I don't, um, you can make a kill hole easily by, like, digging up into, into here, and then digging, uh, like, again, maybe this way, and then there's only, like, a couple spots where things can attack you. Some, some entrances to Vestibule are more open, though, and that's a little hard to pull off. If I knew it would read it out loud, I would have chosen something way more profane. Well, it won't read profane things out loud unless you trick the thing. Sometimes you can get away with zerking the moment you're in... You're killing Garyon, grab the horn and get out. Yeah, I don't like to do that, but it can be done. So this horn, uh, you used to need it to go deeper into hell, but it's that's not the case anymore. Um, it's just an activated ability now. Or an activated item, just like the Lamp of Fire or the File of floods um and it gets you know you get you get it you get uh, to use it again after you gain some experience after using it once all it does is summon those hell beasts that shove enemies around and do good damage extremely good item although sometimes they come in hostile it's based off of your evocations i'd actually love to use this thing um but unfortunately it's considered evil because it's summoning demons and the shining one would actually get pissed at me and, and start wrathing me if i tried to use it so we're going to leave it. Although in ordinary three or four rune games, I will typically do this vestibule of hell, this entrance area of hell, um, just enough to pick up the horn uh, because it's a really useful item for the end game. For, uh, well, for, you know, extended, or not extended, for, for Zot and for the orb run. And I guess it's nice to have an extended too if you're not worshipping TSO. But TSO is the most, the most powerful god for the extended content. So that's why we're going TSO. Eight-headed Hydra Zombie, we can just kill these. He will not uh, gain heads back, although at this point in the game it wouldn't really matter to me. All right, so typically there's just not... There's not a lot of dangerous... There's not a lot of stuff in in the vestibule that can bother me, so I'm just going to tab through it. We've seen all these enemies before. I'm not... Actually, we may not have seen Hell Knights. Hell Knights are just... They just cast Bolt of Fire. Um, Technically, they're just considered human, so you'll notice it says you slash the Hell Knight, you headbutt the Hell Knight. It doesn't say the Hell Knight convulsed. What that means is that the Holy didn't do anything, so we'll swap to our chopping, where we know we get extra damage and kill them. Swap back. 
This is a Heliphant. Heliphants do an enormous amount of fire damage. They actually do just as much fire damage, I think, as an Orb of Fire. Just a big boy, big boy elephant with uh, fire breath and uh, they can actually blink as well, which makes them kind of annoying to kill. I think they're only considered animals. Let me, let me check. Let me see something here. Uh, demonic, evil. Okay, so our holy weapon will, will do damage, extra damage to him. Uh, I want to see how much his fire breath does. Yeah, 3d40 up to 120 fire damage. Of course, we have just an enormous amount of RF, RF++, plus plus, so... We'll attack him. He blinked away. I'm sort of tab this stuff. So one of the cool things about doing extended with TSO is like I can just heal myself. You'll notice every time I get hurt, I'm kind of healing as I attack, right? Because every time I kill something, there is a very strong chance, very, very strong chance of me healing a little bit. And there's a lot of stuff to kill. So TSO, I would make the argument that TSO is easy mode. As far as extended goes, uh-oh. Trog sends monsters to punish you. Two ogres, two deep trolls, two cyclopes, and five bears. Uh, we can just fight this stuff, although a normal character would not really be able to tank this very well and would probably want to cast Blink. In fact, I'm just going to do the proper thing. So we have the ability to evoke Blink because we happen to have um, boots with plus Blink on them. So we're going to use A and then I, evoke Blink, to send us to a slightly better location. Um, I'm then going to use Divine Shield, give myself more SH, just in case. Switch to the chopping, because none of this stuff is demonic, it's just pissed off. Um, only a couple things can attack us right now. Okay, now three things, that's a lot. We would probably keep blinking under normal circumstances, but I know this character can just kill that stuff. You will not heal from killing things that are not demonic or undead, so be aware of that. There was a Berserk Stone Giant there. That would slaughter most characters, but remember, our defenses are amazing, so... Okay, uh, so Vestibule's done. It's very small. It's only one floor. Uh, there's really no loot in it, except for Garyon's Horn and some demonic weapons, I guess, that some of the enemies will spawn. So you'll see it's kind of a... kind of a map legend, I guess. You know, northwest, east, south. In the south, you're going to have the Iron City of Dis which is based on earth magic, I suppose. Just kind of straight damage, hard to prepare for. Gehenna is based on fire. You really want to have at least one pip of fire resistance in there. Kotkitas is based on cold. You really want to have at least one pip of uh, cold resist. Uh, Tartarus is based on negative. You really want to have at least one pip of our negative and ideally some way of dealing with torment more R negative the better, although this is not going to make you immune to torment, you're still going to take an enormous amount of damage. Shanger says use clouds to fill more squares to control for random blink. That's true. Um, there is a thing called a ghetto blink, so I'll demonstrate that. Sure, that's a good... thanks for mentioning that. So I have the ability to evoke fog because I happen to have the cloak of the thief, although if I didn't have that I could do this with a fog cloud uh, scroll. So check this out. Um, yeah, compass rose is what I meant to say, not legend. You're right. I think I think it can also be called a legend, though. I might be wrong. Anyway, so we'll evoke fog. Check this out. So ordinarily, right, um, using not a blink scroll, but a but a blink um, spell or a blink evocation or a blink mutation um, is uncontrolled, right? It's not like the scroll. It'll send you anywhere that you can see. But if I use fog, right, and then I take a step up, I can't see these tiles anymore, right? off to the southwest and the south. So now if I evoke Blink, I'm way more likely to go either here where I went or somewhere up here. This can be really, really, really helpful when you're trying to escape from things or get somewhere faster. Although in an ordinary run of the game, you're not gonna get like an enormous amount of fog usually. Um, we have infinite fog more or less because we have, because we have the cloak, but that's a very rare item. Anyway, uh, we are a little lucky here. We kind of get the pick of the litter as far as which hell we want to go to first because we have all the resistances in the world. Typically, I would save Dis for last um, because it's very, very dangerous. And Tartarus can be incredibly dangerous too. Um, I think we'll just do Gehenna first because that's the most typical hell, I guess, uh, from a mythological standpoint because it's very fiery. All right, so we go in. Uh, and first we see we're in Gehenna 1 now, instead of the Vestibule. There are seven floors to each hell, 
bit of a slog to get through them. You'll see that there is a gateway to hell here. If I take this, I end up back in the vestibule. It's like going upstairs, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot of trash monsters and dangerous monsters. So that was a white, that's a trash monster at this point. Very easy to kill. So what we're doing down here is there's, there's no loot, right? Uh-oh. Okay, there's a tormentor. Under normal circumstances, I would say that going in Viz is a great idea against these guys, but we can't go in Viz. We have Halo from TSO. If you're in Viz, they can't torment you because they can't see you. Uh, unless you have living allies around, then they'll torment anyway because they can see them. So we really don't want to give this guy a chance to... Like, the name of the game in Extended is don't get tormented as much as possible, right? Minimize the number of turns where it's possible to get tormented. There are a number of ways to deal with this Tormentor quickly. I could Cleansing Flame, but the thing is he's one, two, he's a little bit out of range, right? I said it was two, goes out two tiles around, he's three tiles away. So we can't Cleansing Flame to kill him, although that would be the primary way. Uh, we could like Acid him to try to kill him, Ice Blast him to try to kill him instantly. It might work. Um, I'm going to try to Paralyze, 59% chance at 27 evocations, and it works. If you went throwing, you could just like throw something at his face and he might die instantly. But at the bottom, the bottom line is those tormentors are just a top, top tier threat. Top tier. Okay. Okay. So what we're doing in this area is we're looking for the, the way to go downstairs, okay? And occasionally, actually, did you see... Okay, I'm going to wait until the next one before I explain this. I'll, I'll kind of talk about it a bit. There's a thing There's a thing called hell effects, right? Every so often, hell will just dump enemies on your head or do some kind of effect. Here's, a, here's an example. Um, you feel a terrible foreboding. Something appears in a flash of light. A crimson a tormentor and a zombie comes into view. So that's an example of a hell effect, and it differs depending on which hell you're in. There are no hell effects in uh, Vestibule. But it's very dangerous no matter which hell you're in because it can do things like dump these tormentors on your head, and they can take away half your life, right? Or some percentage, depending on your R negative. But he's within range of my cleansing flame, so I'm just going to do that. Boom. He doesn't die, but he also doesn't torment me. We're going to do it again. It's almost always better to Cleansing Flame than to attack when you really want to kill something quickly. And the reason for that is because it's virtually guaranteed to do damage, whereas you might miss with your swing. So if I want to kill something, especially if it doesn't have much hit points, because a Tormentor does not have that many hit points. Um, okay, we're getting flayed. That's okay. We're going to walk right up to this guy and kill him. Okay, here's our downstairs. So now you're going to see something very interesting. Let's go down. So we end up here, and what am I standing on? I'm standing on a gateway to hell. So no matter how deep I go into Gehenna or any other hell, as soon as I go downstairs, if I were to exit by going through this gateway to hell, I would end up in the vestibule. So this is why I like hell way better than doing pandemonium first, because essentially, you know, no matter what happens, as long as I'm near a staircase, I can leave the entire damn branch uh, and be 100% safe, you know? You suddenly feel lethargic. See, this is a really dangerous thing about being in here under wrath. Um, at any moment, Trog might just make me slow. But we're so strong, I'm not too worried. Let's fight this stuff. See how mad he is? He's still super mad. The slow will end immediately. Or, not immediately, eventually. Okay, I'm gonna rest... Uh-oh, we're slow, and there's a lot of really dangerous crap around me. So, that's really bad. This is a Hellion that can Hellfire me, but he won't as long as this Hellhog is next to me, who is not immune to Hellfire, or Damnation if you want to call it. Uh, Brimstone Fiend is probably one of the most dangerous enemies in the game, because he has the Hellfire, or Damnation if you want to call it that, ability uh, that does up to 60 damage regardless of anything. And then he also has Symbol of Torment, which halves my hit points. But these guys are in a great position for me to just Cleansing Flame a lot. So we kill the Hellion immediately. Have I mentioned random hell effects? Yep. I was mentioning that. You can, uh... 
Well, that was a hell effect right there where enemies got dumped on my head. Um, although sometimes it will be just like effects rather than uh, rather than summons, you know, like uh, in this you can be petrified, which is really bad. Okay, I'm rotting. I'm going to drink a curing to get that off. All right, so I'm, I'm pressing five now. I'm resting because I don't I don't want to go downstairs while the slow is still active. So I rested. All right, so here's a hatch. All right, see, it's that red thing that we saw in the dungeon. If I go down here, remember that this does not give me an upstairs. So it's it can be dangerous uh, because there's, there's not going to be... See, the floor is beneath me now. I'm going into examination mode by pressing X, and then I'm pressing V on myself, and it just says floor. There's no gateway up. So it can be dangerous, although here's another thing about hell. Uh, the hatch will always send you to the same spot on the level. Uh, whereas, and this is something I haven't really mentioned yet... Oh man, hold on. I want to kill this, uh... I want to kill this flight ghost. I want to kill him quickly, so I'm using my lightning rod to get all my hit points back. I could just book it for the downstairs, but we might as well kill all this stuff. Okay. So, I go down. I could end up, going down a regular staircase, I could end up on any one of the gateways on this, on this floor. And it's gonna be, it could be different every time I go down. So the, that's another interesting thing about the downstairs in hell. They act in a very, very unique way. Like, I could have just as easily going down that downstairs ended up not here, but here where this other gateway is. So there are going to be times, and you probably won't see it on this character, but there are going to be times when you're doing hell and you just get overwhelmed because there's just too many really powerful hell effects. Uh, you just, you just kind of get grinded down, you know? And you're going to need to leave, and then you're going to have to go back in, and you'll you'll be like, wow, why why am I ended why am I ending up in the wrong <laughs> the wrong place this time? And that's why. Um, hell really encourages you to, to do to to go through it sort of piecemeal and go down and then go back up if you need to. All right, here's that hellium. We'd rather not get hell fired a bunch. Why don't we try to paralyze him 59% just like the tormentor, and he goes down. And this is another reason TSO is so amazing. You see, I keep consistently getting like a Hellion and a Brimstone Fiend dumped on my head. And I can just Cleansing Flame to deal with this crap. Uh, and I'm swinging on the Brimstone Fiend once he's alone. Uh, because he has a lot more hit points than the Hellion. And a single hit of my Holy Axe is going to do an enormous amount of damage to him. Also, I attack a little faster with the Axe than I uh, Cleansing Flame. Cleansing Flame costs one point of... Uh, like, it would say 1.0 up here, whereas attacking is only 0.7 at Mendeley for the Broad Axe. Uh-oh. So here's an interesting situation. Tormentor, right? Extremely dangerous, can torment me from anywhere on the screen. However, these pigs are in my way. I can't, I can't hex him with the Paralysis Wand. So here's a trick. We're going to evoke Fog. Take a step up, take a step up and to the right. And now that Tormentor can't see me. And he won't be able to see me. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to sort of walk away. Ah, crap. There's another one. Let's evoke fog again. And okay, now we will cleansing flame and check this out. It may have seemed like I was having a super easy time, but look what one torment did to me. I have R negative. Fully, fully maxed R negative. But this thing still took me from 246 hit points to 161 hit points in one turn. Nothing else did damage to me. Nope, nothing else. So you can see how quickly things can go horribly in here. And I cleansing flamed like I should have, but Tormentor just didn't die. Partially because our invocations isn't 27, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Cleansing flame again, and he does die. There's another Tormentor though. Cleansing flame again, and again. Now, the convenient thing is, and this is not the case for other gods, with the Shining One, my hit points is going up as I kill those things, so... Uh, really, really makes this much, much easier. And at some point, I will do tutorials for doing this without the Shining One, and it's going to be much harder. It's going to be much more complicated. But some of these tools, for example, paralyzing Hellions from afar and using fog and whatnot, some of those tools will remain really handy. Okay, so I... I, I uh, cleansing flamed because the brimstone fiend was too far away for me to, to attack, so I wanted to get some damage on him as he approached me. 
I don't want to spend any dead turns, basically, doing things that are not killing the tormenting enemies uh, faster. That's another gateway. That leads out, so we will not take it. We're not trying to leave. We're trying to get to the bottom floor. Hello. Smell brimstone. Brimstone fiend comes into view. We'll blast. Blast again. Blast again. He doesn't die. We'll swing. And he dies. Technically, cleansing flame costs piety, but don't worry about that at all. You're killing undead and demon things, uh, demonic things, in this branch so quickly, it's outrageous. All right, check this out. Occasionally... Uh, yeah, that's right, tone hack. I think one third, 35% uh, sounds about right. Yeah, it's one half if you don't have any R negative. Um, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could look up torment. There we go. Negative energy resistance reduces the damage percentage by 5% per level. So at R neg 3, torment only takes 35% of your health. Only, air quotes, only 35%. Oh no. Hey, JF Karen, how you doing, man? You want a Minotaur Summoner of Rue by totally ignoring the Summoner background? Yeah, that's what you do when you're a Minotaur. You beat things. You don't You don't cast things. Well done. Uh, although I think Kilmatronics would have some words to say about that. He doesn't... Uh, he's, he's, like, obsessed with playing Minotaurs that cast things. Anyway. Um, so we found a shaft. Shafts are, like you know, gold in uh, in hell. You really want to find shafts. And the reason why is because they can dump you one to three floors lower. They act like a hatch insofar as, like, you, you will not land on a gateway. Uh, but you still want to take them because it sends you deeper, uh, which is awesome. Like, you really want to just fly through the first six floors um, because there's no loot there. There's just uh, death, so you don't want to be there. The only problem with taking this shaft is we're going to end up on Gehenna 7, and we may end up, like, right next to the boss. And we, we ended up kind of close to the boss, actually. And we have no way out. This would be an incredibly dangerous thing to do on most characters. Um, but also really rewarding. And I really like it. Um, however, I don't want to get hellfired and tormented at the same time. So check this out. because And by the way, you really want to slow down. I'm playing relatively quickly, I would say. Um, but you really want to slow down here more than anywhere else in the game. Extended is where you slow down. Like, I went down here, and it's like, you may have to sit here and evaluate what am I going to do. Like, and with your big targets, like, you can ignore the zombie for the most part, the skeletons. Yeah, this is just crap, the devil. But, like, here's your big boys. Brimstone Fiend can torment me and, and hellfire me. Hellion can hellfire me. Uh, Hellion can hellfire me regardless of uh, if there's stuff in between me and him or not. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to evoke fog. Mostly because I didn't want this Hellion to be able to see me. It didn't quite work, so we're going to take a step to the left. We get tormented. We're going to start cleansing flaming. Uh, we moved because something entered this dispersal trap. I knew that could happen, but that's okay. I've got this fog rolling. Let's swing. Swing again. We killed him. Uh, unfortunately, this flayed ghost could see us. Why don't we take a step down into the right? Uh-oh, we got dispersed again by that trap. Mm hmm It's getting a little rough. Okay, so I could move... Here's a trick that's very important for when you're not worshipping TSO, but still important now. If you're standing next to something that's not immune to Hellfire, or Damnation as it's called now, uh, then that thing will cause the Hellion not to do it, not to Hellfire you, because he doesn't want to hurt his buddy. That will not work, however, on weak stuff. So this Crimson Imp, Hellion does not care. He will happily kill his friend. Uh, however, if I got next to the Titan Zombie, who is a very big boy, uh, he will decide that the Titan Zombie is just so strong that he doesn't want to damage his friend. I think it's based on hit dice. Uh, you'll get a feel for which monsters cause that and which ones don't. Hello, Adort. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Anyway, I'm just going to Cleansing Flame, because I want to kill the Hellion instantly. I see that there's two of these. Check it out. I'm going to use the trick now. Let's go next to the Titan, and while I could take a lot of damage, I guess, from the Titan, Hellions are the most important thing, because they cut right through my defenses, and they will not be doing their stuff now. 
Bell rugs, by the way, are not a very powerful demon. Uh, at this point in the game, anyway, they're easy. Earlier on, they might be hard, but they're basically just big balls of fire damage, and also they can smite you. But notably, they are not immune to hellfire, so let's swing. Let's swing. I'm 100% safe. We're just gonna... Uh, actually, we're gonna evoke fog and take a step... Uh, we'll take a step down to the right because I knew that one of those enemies would end up next to me, which means that the Hellions will not hellfire me, and uh, I just wanted to be... I wanted to not be able to see the Flayed Ghost is the problem. Alright. I'm gonna swing... I'm gonna Cleansing Flame, that'll kill more things. There we go. How did I take damage? Oh. Something... I feel like I have less hit points than I did a second ago, but it doesn't look like I took damage. How curious. Oh well. Let's Cleansing Flame again, because there's a Titan Zombie here that I can't reach. If I were to swing on the Balrog, that would only kill one thing. Let's kill two things. Cleansing Flame again to kill the Hellion quickly. Hellion dies before he can do anything to me. Something reaches out for you. A gut-wrenching scream fills the air. That's another hell effect, but this time it's just a soul eater. Cleansing Flame again. I get blinked from the Flayed Ghost walking into the Dispersal Trap. I'm going to take a step down into the left. I want to get closer to this ghost, and I want to kill him. Swing on him. All right, check it out. Shaman. Shaman I am. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Always like subs. Very, very nice. Hellions will... Edward says Hell, Hellions will Hellfire their own guys. No, only, only if they are Hellfire immune, uh, or if they are weak. Um... If I'm next to something with enough hit dice or maybe hit points, it will it will just not hellfire. Like I'm pretty sure they will not hellfire next to a Titan zombie, for instance. And we saw that they just kind of sat there doing nothing, you know. Your new character, JF Karen says his new character is a centaur arcane marksman of Oka. Super powerful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Easily. For sure. You suck at Dota. But it was fun to watch you. Oh, I'm awful. There's no question. I'm not even going to be offended by that. I'm going to switch to chopping, uh, because that is... These are just basic fire giants, right? They will not take more damage from the Holy Axe. Now I'm going to switch back to Holy, because there's only demons left. Uh-oh. Oh, and this is a horrible thing that can happen. Check this out. Um, so I took a step, and it says the Brimstone Fiend roars. Brimstone Fiend comes into view. Brimstone Fiend calls on the power of darkness. That's torment. Your body is racked with pain. I didn't know he was there, but you can just take a step and, like, hello, here's the bad guy. So we're going to fog. Fog is really good in here. It's nice to have an awful lot of it. So we just wait a few turns, uh, and then we swing on him. And now he's, check it out. So I said that usually swinging on the brimstone fiends is, uh, is better to do when you have a big holy weapon, right? But here's the exception. Um, there's two exceptions. One is when they're two steps away from you, okay, because then you want to do damage while they're approaching. The other is if they're already almost dead. Look at this dude. It says almost dead. Uh, right, right here, in fact. Right there. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, my axe can miss, but my cleansing flame is probably going to kill him, and it does. So to guarantee the kill, I did that. So, I don't need a magic map, but I'm going to. I know where I am, but I'm going to show you guys what this actually looks like. All hail the Almighty. Hey, Alf, what's up, my friend? How you doing, buddy? Okay, so the shaft took me right into the center of... Uh, basically, this is where the rune is and where the boss is. But ordinarily, if I had taken a regular downstairs, I would have ended up right here where these gateways out are. And you're supposed to fight your way through a bunch of garbage and make your way to these little bridges or maybe fly across the lake or river, I guess, uh, and then into this cool-looking fortress. And, and it'll look different every time. Um, this is just one potential layout of Gehenna. Gehenna 7. Brimstone Fiend comes into view. Good time to fog. Eat some rations while I wait for him to show up. And then we'll Cleansing Flame, and then we'll swing... And then we'll swing again and he dies. I should have cleansing flamed him. Whoops. Whoa. 
Okay, so there is going to be loot typically on the seventh floor. Oh god. Cleansing flame again. There we go. Like this has a lot of gold on it. And there are things I'd like to buy with gold. I suppose I have the shopping list of a lot of consumables that I should have bought before coming in here. But I generally do not try to get any of that loot unless there's something I'm missing and I really, really need for the rest of the hells. And the reason is because every single turn I spend in here, something really awful could happen. So typically I just want to get in and get out. We're strong enough that we could gather up all this gold if we felt like it, but what's, what's the point? Okay, we're going to fog. So you may be wondering, like, what if I didn't find the Cloak of the Thief? Because you usually won't. I wouldn't be able to fog quite this much. Uh, we only have three scrolls of fog, see? Uh, there are other things that you can do. Uh, man, what would I be doing, actually? I guess I'd probably be blinking in that situation. Either to get further away out of his line of sight, or to uh, get close to the Brimstone Fiend. Hey, Natsume Epoxy, how you doing, man? Is there a way to protect against damnation? Only, only positioning. Um, there's well, there's two ways to protect against hellfire or damnation, if if, uh, if you want to call it that. Um, the first, the first is to hold on. That's the boss. Um, the first is to do what I've been doing by standing next to strong enough monsters that are not immune to hellfire, and then then they will not hellfire you. The enemy will say, "I don't want to blow up my buddy." Um, the second way is to make it so they just can't see you, you know? Um, so, and there's two, it's important to notice that there's two kinds of hellfire. The first one is called call down hellfire or call down damnation. Uh, and what that does is it's smite targeted, right? So they can, you have to remember, they can do that anywhere. But if it's hurl hellfire or hurl damnation, then if you put a guy in between you and them at any point, as long as he's not right next to you, uh, they can just kind of, not not be able to get a, a shot at you kind of like how i can't iron shot somebody if there's something in between me and them or i can't fireball somebody if there's somebody in between me and them uh yeah beckoning yes lesser beckoning well i feel like we'll talk about those techniques i'm, I'm trying to do this from a newbie perspective so we're gonna talk about those techniques when i do extend it on a character that's uh, not the maybe of tso but yeah you're right that is a good one anyway so this is asmodeus he's wielding the plus seven scepter of asmodeus he has fire clouds around him all the time. He's a very dangerous guy. Greatest and most cunning of the lords of hell, Asmodeus was born when the twin fires of greed and treachery first sparked life within a mortal's heart. His hideous body is perpetually wreathed in flame. That's not very nice. Body shaming. Wow, I didn't know uh, DCSS was so bigoted. He has 450 hit points. A uh, bolt of fire for probably an enormous amount of damage. I actually don't know how much. We can look him up this way. Um, Bolt of Fire, 3d26, about 70, a little more than 75 damage. Um, yeah, the biggest pushover, the Lords of Hell. There's a reason I'm doing Gehenna first. Hurl Damnations, 3d20, 60 damage possible. Uh, Fire Summon is the interesting thing here, and Abjuration. He will take away my summons, not that I have any. Summons Demons of Flame and Damnation. Flame, flame and Hellfire is what it is. Uh, basically, he'll summon Brimstone Fiends, which are very dangerous for me. Okay, so I would like to... I would like to throw a net on him. Nothing can survive in a tiny net. I learned this from a very good movie. Uh, so he is small enough that you can actually throw a net on this horrible demon. Enjoy that visual. Now that he's netted, check it out. Look at his big AC. I don't like him having that much AC. That's a lot of pips of AC. He's not very evasive because he's in my net. But damn, dude, look at all that AC. Can we do anything about that? Yes, we can. Acid. Uh, he did not actually get splashed with the acid, or he did, but it didn't. There we go. The acid corrodes Asmodeus. That's what we're looking for. By the way, if I was weaker, I would be doing things like hasting and miting. Like, I would drink one of my six potions of haste. I would drink one of my eight potions of might. I would drink agility. Um, it's actually very foolish that I haven't done that, but I happen to know that I can take his AC away like this. I can take his evasion away with the net, and I can just kill him without even using any of my resources. So we're just going to swing on him now. Swing, swing, swing. We do enormous damage, typically. He's out of the net. 
Uh, I'm going to see what Cleansing Flame does to him at my current invocation level. Not very much. Again, yeah, it's not enough. Let's throw another net on him. I see that the Corrosion has gone away, so we're going to Acid him again. It's actually doing pretty good damage, even if it's not corroding him. Bolt of it. Wow, that one did no damage. So swingy, the damage values in this game. He's corroded. He summoned a Hellion, and that he will happily Hellfire me, because Asmodeus himself is uh, immune to Hellfire. So let's Cleansing Flame in order to kill the Hellion, and then we'll swing. I'm not worried about missing Asmodeus because he's in a net, right? So swinging is the optimal thing. It's going to do the most damage. And he goes down. Cool. He leaves the plus seven scepter of Asmodeus, which is dark red for me because, uh, well, TSO wouldn't like it very much if I was using such an evil item. But uh, what it does is it summons fire demons for you. It's not a very good thing to use, to be honest, because they're hostile really often. Phantom Mirror, Sack of Spiders, I'm happy with that. This is the Obsidian Rune. Boom. Artifact Gloves, let's identify those off the ground by reading and then pressing comma. Uh, pair of plus zero pair of gloves, R and plus dex plus four. Our existing gloves are so much better, we're not going to use them. Um... Unrand, uh, this was called the Sword of Jihad, but then someone complained and everything in DCSS has to be as PC as humanly possible, so now it's called the Zealot Sword, which is the worst name change that was ever done, so I call it Jihad. Uh, it's a plus 10 uh, sword, which is holy branded, and it's Star Rage, so it makes you berserk. Jihad literally means holy war, by the way, um, so it was a perfectly thematic weapon, but someone actually made a troll post pretending to be... Uh, both Muslim and offended. It wasn't an actual Muslim, by the way. It was just some guy, because like, he admitted to it later that he was just joking. Um, but the devs are so insane with this game that uh, they decided that it was offensive. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a thematic weapon, you know? I mean, I thought it was cool. Uh, I don't, I can't imagine any, anyone genuinely being offended by that, but this is this is what happens when Nancy boys uh, run run the game. But anyway, it's uh, wholly branded. It uh, star rages both you and all of your allies, which is a really, really cool ability for certain characters, although you really don't want to be berserked usually. Um, gives you RN+, plus, gives you EV plus three. Unfortunately, um, is that a triple sword or is it a double sword? No, it's a U-Demon Blade. Yeah, okay. So it's actually one-handed. It's an incredible weapon. Um, you just generally want to find a way to not berserk off of that because being berserked is dangerous. If you could um, perhaps get clarity somehow, that would be handy. Thank you for the follows, guys. DCSS trivia stream. Yeah, I'll talk about the history a little bit. Every time you find Zealot's sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I do talk about that every time I find it. Anyway, uh, let's teleport. Okay, so we when you find the rune, typically you don't want to like slog your way out of this damn place because look how long of a walk it is. I'd have to, if I had stayed here, I would have had to walk around here and around here and then down here to this thing and can't go right across unless I fly. So now we have to go up here and then walk all the way down. Blah, 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 blah. Here I am down here. It sucks. Uh, most of that's unexplored because we shafted into the center of this floor and I have to deal with hell effects the whole way. But I have like a million scrolls of TP. So we're just going to teleport until we end up somewhere where I'd like to be. I'd like to be here. This is close enough for me. So check this out. This is all trash around me, right? There's nothing stopping me from just kind of kiting it all and just walking away, except for the fact that a Hellion, or excuse me, a Tormentor showed up, so we're going to have to fog. Oh, look, it's Trog's Wrath. <laughs> Let me show you a funny thing you can do with Trog's Wrath under certain circumstances. I'm going to drink a flight. I'm next to this lava, right? These things can't fly. <laughs> hey, I want to kill this guy. I can't. Of course, they'll eventually catch me, and they do. We leave. We kill the angry cyclops. Okay, uh, Trog is still dark red. 
once I kill enough things, it'll go light red, which indicates his, his wrath is ending, and then it'll go white like everybody else in the list, which will make it go, uh, which will mean that your wrath is completely over. Why are Eli and Zen orange? Okay, good question. The reason is because the Shining One, Zen, and Eli are all good gods. Uh, and so, yeah, their piety, like, I can I can abandon the Shining One and he won't get mad at me. And I can, if I switch to a good god, then I will get half the piety. If I switch to any other god, I will still not get wrath unless it's an evil god, such as Kiku, the god of necromancy, or Makleb, the god of blood and death and murder. Um, okay. So if you look at my rune list, you've got um, obsidian. You got obsidian rune now, which I have, uh, and so we have three more hell runes to get. Right? There's a uh, gateway to the freezing waste of Kokitas. There is gateway to the decaying netherworld of Tartarus. Gateway to the Iron City of Dis. Let's go into the freezing wastes of Kokitas. So this one's a little interesting. You'll see that there's deep water everywhere. You will not need flight, but flight would make things a lot easier. Mostly garbage in this. I like to do Kokitas first usually or second because it's just a lot of very easy stuff in here. The mainstay of their high level demons are Ice Fiends which I consider to be the easiest of the demons which can torment you. You challenge run, join and abandon every god. Every time you run into an altar, fully exploring temple is obligatory. <laughs> well, you, you can't win that game I assure you. Uh, that's too much wrath. I'm sure it's technically possible, but very, very unlikely. Koi coitus? That's what you. That's how you think it's pronounced. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to disagree with you, my friend, because it's spelled C O C Y T U S. So coquitus or coquitus, I guess I could see. But koi? Where are you getting the koi from? There's a C O C. There's no C O Y C. Cositas. I could see that one too. I have not googled this, I'll be honest. Oh, whoops. I See, look how quickly I can take damage. I, I walked forward, basically, and one misstep and the Tormentor takes away most of my hit points. We're going to take this hatch. You're fairly certain? I have no idea. Sometimes I like to kill trash in, uh, in Kokitas because I... Well, not in Kokitas. In any hell... If my if my health is low under TSO, because killing all this all this popcorn crap um, gains me all my hit points back. I took that Tele Trap on purpose because that's likely to send me somewhere I haven't been. It's going to reveal a lot more tiles than me walking into the black, and stand more of a chance of showing me a downstairs, which of course we would like to go to. Castlevania Portrait of Ruin, so it's not the best source. Ah. Not sure if Japanese games have a good track record of pronouncing things correctly. Uh oh, that's a tormentor. Okay, here's the big danger. It says you hear diabolical laughter, an ice devil, and four shard strikes come into view. Shard strikes are no joke, man. Um, they're actually one of the few things in Extended that can give a TSO worshiper kind of a run for his money because they're not demonic, so your Cleansing Flame does less damage to them, right? So, uh, Throw Icicle can do 3d30 damage. That's 90 damage, and it's not even reduced by half by your RC. I think it's only reduced by like a quarter, so, uh, or reduced to two, three fourths. You can still Cleansing Flame them, and it'll do some damage. And I like to Cleansing Flame them because it hits most of them or all of them at once. Uh, but bear in mind it will not heal you to kill them, they're just animals. Uh, and it will do less damage. But if you do it enough times, they'll go down. See? Gotta be careful with them though. They can do a lot of damage and they move quickly. Let's, um, 
Let's kill some of this stuff. I want to demonstrate, not only does TSO heal your hit points, he actually gives you mana back when you kill things, see? Kind of cool. Alright, let's take the hatch. Oh, we're on Coke 7 already. Typically just cleansing flame, the Midor says. Yep, me too. If I'm playing TSO, which I actually don't usually use TSO ever. Wait, what happened? Did I take a hatch? I guess I did hatch down into this. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize. You can paralyze them if you have high enough evocations. I have max evocations at 27, but they do have really good MR, um, so it's only 41%. Looked like that worked, though. Cool. I'm just going to kill this one. Let's melee this dude down. I should have probably used chopping instead of holy to do that. So I would like to magic map. I have a very unfortunate dearth of magic mapping. I don't really recognize this um, layout. So I don't know where I am. So we're just going to go off to the north and we're going to see... Uh-oh! It's the Ice Fiend. Let's cleanse and flame him. Not affected by the fact that I'm in shallow water. Ice Fiends can torment you and they can do a lot of ice damage with a bolt. Kind of like how we saw a lot of Brimstone Fiends in Kokitas, we're going to see Ice Fiends in here. Or in uh, Gehenna, we saw Brimstone Fiends. Hate this layout, there are two ends to this. Yeah, I, I thought this was what it was, but I wasn't positive. This is possibly the worst layout. There's your Ice Fiend, Symbol of Torment. Boom, 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 boom. I'm not swinging there because uh, shallow water makes it possible for me to miss. And I'm not flying, and I have I don't have a vocable flight, so I can't exactly be burning my potions of flight left and right just to do that. Switch to chopping. Cleansing flame whenever they're not in range. know where I am still, so we're just going to keep following this path. There's some gold, and that's a good sign. Whoa, screwed up. Let myself take a turn, basically. Okay, we'll swing on him. He's, he's tormented me a bunch. I think we'll finish him with Cleansing Flame. There's a statue here. Not a huge risk at this point in the game. We'll just kill it. Really happy to see all this popcorn. Imagine doing this without healing every time you kill something. And you can see exactly how dangerous hell really is. Um, and it's bizarre because there, there was this spell called Regeneration, which made this bearable for people who were not worshipping TSO. Um, and they took that out of the game. So honestly, without that spell, this is a very recent change to the game. Without that spell, it's incredibly uh, difficult, I would say, to do Extended now, unless you're worshipping TSO. It's a very bizarre turn of events, to be honest. Yeah, they took out regen. It's insane. Uh, it's, it's like they're competing to make the worst possible development decisions with this game. It's crazy. Um, it's just like a massive buff to TSO is all it is. Um, it makes the game significantly more boring, if you ask me, because now there's, you know, it's less, it's less possible to do extended without simply worshipping TSO. Okay, we're gonna fog. Ah, it's on Teus. Basically playing 0.24 forever. It is on the downhill slide. Alright, so Anteus here is the... Uh, basically, he's the most powerful... The most physically powerful thing in the entire game. Can I remove developers from the next release of the world, please? Yeah! Contra Flame is terribly nerfed in the next version, for sure. Alright, Guardian of Kokitas. Once a hero among the Titans, Anteus grew jealous of the Titan Queen. In single combat, he challenged and slew her... And for this crime, he was exiled and descended into the hells. Finding the inhabitants of that place no match for his might, Anteus tore from its substance a fourth hell, Kokitas, a realm born of frozen spite. This is, this is me. This has happened to me with the devs, basically. Um, he's susceptible to fire, but it doesn't really matter because he has almost 700 hit points, which I think is the most in the game. Um... 
Spacebot, did you see the new stabbing potion? They replaced Agi with a potion that buffs... No, they didn't. Are you joking? There's no way. I don't believe that. That's so dumb. That is so incredibly dumb. I cannot believe that's in mainline. I'll take a look. I mean, I... I... That's actually so... That's, like, too dumb, almost. There's no way. That's hilarious. Okay. Anyway, um... Does it add stealth, or does it just add stabbing damage? Because that's... Uh, <laughs> Agi's a really good potion, so it is obnoxious if they took that out. Um, anyway, this dude hits like a truck. He hits for 30 damage, uh, extra 66 cold damage. Hits for 75 damage plus a weapon, which can sometimes be something really amazing. Right now, it's just pretty good. Deal an extra 66 cold damage, and then more cold damage from the freezing of the axe. Just an incredible amount of uh, incredible amount of damage. Wow, so they, they turned Agi into a useless potion. Okay. Um, anyway, we've started this fight quite hurt. Oh, he has, an, he has a cool amulet. Reflect SH plus 3, Strength plus 6, Int minus 5. I'm not going to want that, but I'm going to have to keep an eye on this, because this means that if I were to do any kind of reflectable effect to him, it could reflect and hit me. Not that I really have any of those. I don't think that, can, that can't work on, work on acid, so we're fine. All right, let's, um, let's open up with haste. So we're moving a little faster. Let's take a step back. Um, another step back. Let's drink Agi. R.I.P. Agi, I guess. My evasion goes to 30. Let's Divine Shield. So we'll block most of his attacks now. Let's go ahead and drink... Um, drink Might. I feel very mighty all of a sudden. Okay. We are going to use Divine Warriors. So that's a Deva... Fine warrior again, that's an angel. So TSO lets you summon these various angels. These guys are going to help me not get owned here. He's beating the hell out of my angels. By the way, you might be wondering, gee, Malcolm, why are you not netting him? Antaeus is a big boy. If you try to net him, it says he's immune to nets, because he's fat. Do you think it would have been worth it to lamp Antaeus given his fire weakness? Yes, but I wanted allies first in case I needed to escape through them. Okay, summon Angel one more time. I can't lamp him now because, well, there was fog in the way anyway, so it wasn't really going to work. But I under normal, under normal circumstances, yeah, I do agree with that. All right, I'm also going to use a sack of spiders. And the reason I can't web him... Actually, no, I can. It says entangled in a web. I guess web works if something is uh, too big to be netted. All right, that's pretty cool. That's uh, that's another way to net him. But I really wanted to do it so I could get this ghost moth who will stop him from using his magical abilities and may stop the ice fiend from using his magical abilities. All right, I'm going to take a step back. I really don't want to be tormented again. How many heal wounds? I have 10 heal wounds. I'm going to drink one of those. I'm going to drink another one of those. Order everybody to attack. I'm going to use my Cleansing Flame, which will not hit my allies, even the ones that are not holy. I don't have enough magic. Ah, crap. Well, that's cool. We have a... Wow, we only have one potion of magic? I'd rather not waste that. Let's take a step... Oh, God. That's... Both of those guys can see me. Let's take a step like this. They can all see me. This is horrible. We can be tormented so many times right now. Let's, um, I don't have the mana to evoke fog, so why don't we read fog instead? Basically, I'm trying to keep the Ice Fiend out of my line of sight. Enemies do not have mana. Um, the thing is, Ghost Moths, the way they work against the player is they take your mana away. But if you have an ally Ghost Moth, instead of taking mana away, which monsters don't have, they will simply apply an anti-magic effect at range, uh, smite, smite targeted even. Incredibly powerful. They make orbs of fire pretty much useless. Uh, let's drink Ambrosia. That'll give us a pseudo regen effect and give my mana back. Okay, my guys should just attack this. They're not attacking it. Okay, I'll drink curing, I guess. Oops, don't attack him. Attack 
the Ice Fiend. All right, we're going to risk this. Cleansing Flame. This is a lot of torment possible, but I will kill these things really quickly. Yeah, I didn't take any torments. Hell yeah. Worst case scenario, if I had gotten tormented a ton, we would have just blinked up and to the right. He's going to typically have three Ice Fiends next to him, so it feels good uh, when, you can, when you can take those out without him being around if you can lure them out one by one. We just kind of didn't do that this time, so we're going to use Acid on him. We see that uh, he is covered in Acid. By the way, a uh, meme way to kill him is to use Curare, because he is technically not demonic, which reminds me I should be using my Chopping Axe. Um, he's not demonic. He's just a living giant. He's not resistant to poison, so you can use Curare Needles against him if you want to. I just didn't do that this time. I'm going to keep Aciding him. It does a ton of damage, and his evasion is honestly not good. All right, let's swing on him. Ouch. Flash Freeze hits you for three exclamation points. I have RC++ and he still did that much damage to me. Swing on him again. Swing on him again and he goes down. I don't really care about that amulet, so we're not going to pick it up. I am going to go ahead and acid this. Cleansing Flame, Cleansing Flame, done. Wow, I used so much Cleansing Flame, my piety dropped by a pip. Would those Atropa Needles work on him? Uh, those things are so stupidly named, I don't even know what they do. What is, what is that, Blindness and Confusion or something? You probably need Throwing Skill for those. Curari's cool, because you don't need any Throwing Skill to make it work. I mean, I have, I have no idea if that would work on him, maybe. Um... It's like a trash item for me, to be honest. It's not particularly useful. Alright, so there's a fan of Gales here. I'm not going to bother to pick it up. Anyway, we got lucky. We we immediately got to the rune. Um, we now have the icy rune of Zot. If I was hurt and not worshipping TSO especially, I might close this door and like wait around and rest. And then if things get summoned on me, they're just sort of in range for me to kill. But instead, because I'm totally full, I'm just going to swap back to my holy weapon and then teleport and rest. I think this is relatively close to the exit, so I'm going to keep this teleport instead of trying to tele again. Back up to full piety very, very quickly, like I said. Oh, no. Man. Oh, wait a minute. No, this is... Okay, I remember this. The exit is, is down. A wacky layout. So we actually got shafted not very close, or not very close to the exit. We actually got shafted really close to the entrance, see? Adored already knows what's up. It's been a while since I've done extended, so I can't memorize every single layout forever, I guess. Um, anyway, there's two runes. Two runes is up. Um, Iron City of Dis, Decaying Netherworld of Tartarus. Let's do Tartarus. I'll, I'll uh, follow my own rules and do Dis last. You can because your brain is massive. Okay. All right, Doomhounds. Doomhounds are really obnoxious. They're an enemy that you pretty much only see in Tartarus. Please note there's also a Tormentor behind them. Doomhounds will use Doom Howl, which applies an effect, which basically makes really, really strong demons um, follow you around and sh well, show up randomly like hell effects only really often, and it just sucks. Uh, and he's, he's, he's ready to hell, baby. Uh, so we're going to actually hex him because his MR sucks, immediately paralyzing him, and then we're going to cleanse and flame to kill this tormentor. Whoa, hello. This is a Shadow Fiend. At some point it was given this really dumbass name, which I refuse to say. We're going to call these Shadow Fiends. Um, they have Dispel Undead, which does like 100-some damage if you're undead, so don't be undead around them. And if you are undead around them, don't, uh, don't be within their line of uh, effect. So you need to have something between you and them, and then they can't dispel you anymore. Symbol of Torment, though, is the big boy. Uh, they can take half your hit points away, they can do a Draining Bolt for more damage, and they can Cold Bolt you for more damage. You'll, you'll see the theme here is that every single branch of Hell has its own little big boy... big boy demon that can, uh... 
you know, torment you. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. We're not as defensive as I thought. Okay, so we're in a really bad place, right? Trog sent Wrath at us. See how Wrath can be dangerous? 45 hit points. Not a good, not a good look in hell. Um, we're going to read a scroll of blinking and go this way. All right. Um, these things are berserk, so they will not throw rocks at me. But still, they need to die fast. Let's use the sack of spiders to put a lot of things between me and them. Let's drink ambrosia. That's that's not working. Hold up. Let's cure. Let's acid. And let's fog, because there's a Tormentor coming. Is the orange summoning icon indicating durable summon? Yes. The uh, little thing at the top left of the Iron Troll means that he is durably summoned, which means he will not disappear under any circumstances unless you kill him. We're very hurt. I have so many curing. I'm just going to chug some curing real quick. Actually, I'm going to use Divine Shield... Cleansing Flame, get some hit points back that way from those Hellhounds, and again, and again, and again, do, 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 goodbye. Okay, so typically, if I was playing truly optimally, we would not be doing this well under Trograth. It's actually quite dangerous, um, and you can see how it can add an unstable element to an already difficult situation. We would, we would instead work off the Wrath, essentially. Switch to the chop. Wait, I have the chopping hex on already. Kill all this stuff. Leave, go back to full. These Reapers can be quite tough, by the way. I kind of bowl over them, but bear in mind they do a lot of damage. Check it out, I'm staying, I'm letting this Hydra stay alive because he has enough hit points that I know that the Hellion will not hit me as long as he's next to me. So I tactically did not kill him. Oh wait, it's this guy. We don't want to get howled at, so let's paralyze him. Did I ever mention what body armor I'm using? 31 AC seems super low for level 27. It is relatively low because I'm using a plus 6 chainmail of the kettle drum, which gives me dex plus 7 and our poise. Um, it is kind of a crappy armor for late game, I have to admit. Um, I suppose we already have our poise from the ring, and I, the dex is giving me a good amount of EV, but I could switch to something else. It's just I don't need resistances anymore, so dragon armor is kind of silly. Um... Yeah, I could wear gold dragon skills, but I've already got RC++ plus plus and RF++, plus plus, so it would just take me higher. The big problem with the gold dragon scales is that I don't... Um, I've, I've been sort of bamboozled on enchant armors. I only have four of them. Um, so, I mean, I suppose I could wear a plus four GDA, or GDS, I guess. Or a plus four crystal plate, for that matter. But um, I kind of like having the high evasion. I think I did a test last session I saw that it was just going to completely obliterate my evasion. I kind of like having a balance of evasion and AC if possible. C plate would be better with your resistances, right? Not necessarily. Um, being evasive is really good, especially in dis, because being able to evade crystal spears and whatnot is quite nice. Okay, is another dog. Goodbye, dog. Goodbye, hound. Even though the AC is low, the overall defenses are still truly enough to get 15 runes, for sure. 
AC is generally better than EV, I agree, JF Karen, but once you have a ton of AC, like 20 plus, you kind of would prefer a balance. I wouldn't say 20 plus is a ton of AC, I'd actually put that closer to 30, but yeah, you're basically correct. Let's go down. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. I, I almost missed it because my eyes are bad. But there is a shaft. By the way, um, notice that I'm in a silence. There are these things called silent specters. This uh, nice lady right here. Uh, until you kill her, the area around her is silenced, right? Extremely dangerous, and they spawn naturally in Tartarus. Let's dive through the shaft. I don't need to worry about her. Trog sends monsters to punish you. All right, let's chop these guys to death. Very obnoxious that a Shadow Fiend showed up right here. Um, let's Cleansing Flame. And again, he dies. Good. Yeah, it is definitely lower AC than you would typically have on a Minotaur. I do not disagree. This is weird. I've not seen this before, but I really like this. This is like a... Huh. Deep water that looks like sewer water, and then there are death oozes. And then Necrophade. What a cool little theme. I've not seen this before. Usually these are monsters that don't spawn in Tartarus, but it's a the little themed area. Sometimes you'll see these on the way down. Let me drink a flight. I like this a lot. It's like a... It's like just like a... Death sort of rot themed area. With withered plants and things. It's so cool. It's these cute little things that really make me like DCSS despite all of the really shady stuff behind the scenes with the, the devs essentially hating the player base. Uh, there, there are some cute little little things uh, in the game that just kind of make you smile. Alright, let's go down. If only it was fun to clear extended so such vaults could be appreciated. <laughs> yeah, to Cambridge. Well, I tell you, I really like what B-Crawl, a fork of DCSS, did with extended, which is... Uh, just made it so the hells are all two floors each. It made the slog feel much less like a slog. Really wonderful, to be honest. All right, let's do a hell legitimately. This is the first time we've gone down into the seventh floor the way that was intended. So we took it downstairs. You happy I said that so you don't have to cancel your sub? I'd really like to magic map here. Very funny, Artagus. I'd really like to magic map here to find out where the rune is. Um, but I have an idea. I think it's in the middle up to the north in this layout. Playing B Crawl now. It's a better game. I mean, it's a better game by virtue of the fact that the, the dev of that game is not a spiteful bastard, basically, which, I mean, I hate to dog on the devs of DCSS so much, but they have a history of just saying and doing really horrible things. Not all of them, just some, but... You know how they say, like, one one bad apple spoils the batch? Um, as long as they tolerate having, like, literal literal malignant narcissists on staff uh, who abuse the player base, it's kind of hard to... It's kind of hard to appreciate the development team until until that's dealt with, you know? Right. Take this stuff down. Pretty easy. Gotta be careful of the shadow demons, um, because they can summon all kinds of stuff, including really tough enemies from this floor. Finally, I got Vampiric Draining. Did I, was there a vamp? Oh, yeah, Vampiric Scythe. Don't use Scythes, they're very slow. Also, Vampiric is considered evil, so TSO is not going to be cool with me using that. That's a good, that's a good kappa there, uh, the dort. That's because the bad apple emits ethylene, which makes the other apples ripen faster in chain reaction. Well, look at the big brain on JF Karen. I did not know that. Thank you for the info, actually. Is that the same stuff? Oh, man. Is that the same stuff that the... Uh, I heard the supermarkets do that. Like, they, they cover um, fruits in, in some kind of gas in order to make them ripen faster. So they appear like they're ripe, but they're not exactly ripe. Does that... Is that true? Anyway, there's a couple reasons we want to fog here. Number one is that there's a Shadow Fiend. Number two is that there's a Mark Trap. I shouldn't have come this far... Uh, towards it, to be honest. Uh-oh, Ancient Lich. He can LCS me for 144 damage. Let's treat him like the big boy threat he is. And, uh, Cleansing Flame him to death. Okay. 
Okay, this is he's hasted, but he is not the LCS Lich, so. Plus he has CO2 or something to flush the ethylene away so they ripen faster, ripen slower. Hmm. Science, man. Although I don't know if I want to, uh, you know, gassed fruits for uh, for a meal. It feels a little sketchy. Interesting. Are you by any chance a horticulturalist? Or do you just do this as a hobby? I used to grow cherry, uh, strawberries in my little little indoor garden. Pretty sure my neighbors thought I was growing weed because uh, I had the indoor grow lights, which were purple. All right, uh, we have Space Lady, uh, Ereshkigal, Queen of Tartarus. Greatest and most inexorable of the Lords of Hell. Now, hold on. Hold the phone. Uh, I have a complaint. It said that Asmodeus was the greatest Lord of Hell. Hold on. Greatest and most cunning of the Lords of Hell, it says about Asmodeus. Greatest and most inexorable of the... I I'm feeling fibbed, too. Somebody's... Somebody's telling me Porky Pies. No, as... Hold on. Antaeus was not the greatest. It does not say he's the greatest. They all have their own PR team. All right. I don't know if I've read these descriptions before. If I have, it's been a long time. Greatest and most inexorable of the Lords of Hell, Ereshkigal was born when first a mortal breathed her last. Noiselessly, she laughs at lives cut short and loved ones separated by untimely death and wreathed in the silence of the grave. That's, that's very purple, this prose. All right. Um, cannot be exhorted. It's true. Bolt of cold, summon greater demon, silence, abjuration, torment, paralyze. She can do all this stuff while she is silenced. She can also heal herself a lot. She's incredibly dangerous. Um, incredibly dangerous. So what we're going to do first, because we know we could be silenced at any moment, is we're going to start summoning angels because that ability is going to be taken away from me as soon as she silences. Okay, I could haste, but I think we're just going to kill her. We're going to throw a net on her. That's just... Her AC's crap without aciding her, so let's just go to town with the axe. You slice Ereshkigal, two exclamation points. Ereshkigal convulses, two exclamation points. You headbutt Ereshkigal, two exclamation points. The angels have no trouble hitting her because of the uh, because of the net, so they're just beating the hell out of her as well. We're just we're just whooping her. They have they have they literally have whips. They're just whipping this demon to death. <laughs> it's very brutal. The net rips apart, Ereshkigal comes free. Let's cleansing flame for guaranteed damage. Damn! Four exclamation points. That that does you do get more exclamation points for the more damage you're doing, so we we are crushing her. And they 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 whoop her to death. Alrighty. Yeah, rogue shenanigans, I kind of agree about the writing. Yeah, nets, nets are the ultimate. Um, the ultimate in demon-killing technology, really. Uh, that thing I just killed, by the way, was a death drake. Um, beware, they can dump something called miasma on your head, which slows you, does enormous damage, uh, and rots you, which means I'm actually rotted right now. See how it says 246? That's my actual hit points, max hit points, but for the moment, it's down to 243. I have to drink a curing or a heal wound to get that off. Some kind of special healing. Okay, there's a falchion here. There is no rune. Boom, boom. Out of mana. Yeah, it's old school JF carrying. You used to be able to butcher toxic things, and I think you could even eat the meat voluntarily if you wanted to, to avoid starving. It would just poison you. There's the rune. Bone rune of Zot. Um, gonna kill this shadow fiend first. Boom. Got the bone rune. Now, if I wanted to, I don't really care, but I'll just show it off. Um, I could check out this other thing that's guaranteed some kind of artifact or halfway decent item. It's just a book. We don't care about books. Let's teleport. Very good telly. Very, very close to the exit. Oh, check this out. This is fun. Another example of hell effects. Trespassers are not welcome here. Your body is racked with pain. Just get tormented randomly, cut my uh, hit points down from 246 to 160 some. Pretty interesting, right? Gotta watch out for those hell effects. Trog's Wrath is now light red. That means it's gonna end very soon. 
eat a bunch of rations. Uh, you feel Trog's fiery rage upon you. You resist. It actually burns away my fire resistance. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, we have all the hell runes except for this. Let's get that. Making good time here. This place is interesting because it's fully made of metal. The walls are all metal. This is going to affect some spells. Let's tab through all the trash. I'll only stop to talk about things if it's something dangerous. Just a regular mummy. Very easy. Stuff's pretty easy. Pretty easy here. We all know about Hellions at this point. I just blow them up with my cleansing flame. Take a step to the right so he can't see me. This is one of those tricks you'd use if you didn't have infinite uh, fogging, right? So I took a step to the right, he can't see me. Now I just press 5 and I wait for him. Like, oh no, he's out of range. I'll just close the door and wait again. Now he's next to me and I can just swing and he's dead. He had no opportunity at all to torment me there. None. Except the turn where I swung on him. It's all about minimizing the number of turns they get to do naughty things to you. Go down. This is wacky. This is interesting. Uh, this is a weird little layout. This is the capital of hell. <laughs> I think you'll be doing a bit of panda night. I'm doing everything. We're going to do all of Extended in one, one tutorial. This is going to be... I'll do it as long as it takes, my friend. Okay, I thought this was going to be a cool little vault, but it wasn't really. Let's get away from that saw trap. Let's take the hatch. Really dangerous. Trog Wrath, unfortunately. Explode him. Whoops. Typo there. Brought up my inventory accidentally. Just walk up to these guys. I'm not worried about being flayed. Since there wasn't anything dangerous around, I could just sort of kill him at my leisure. I can't, unfortunately, even if I had a dig wand, I wouldn't be able to dig these walls out. Okay, check it out. I'm going to show this off because I don't want to rely on the fog too much because typically you won't have it. So he hasn't noticed me. Take a step out here, and then we shout. We just keep shouting, and there he is, and now we can just kill him like this. Boom. Again, he had zero chances to torment me except the turns where I was doing damage to him. That thing I just killed, that little dancing yellow man, watch out for him. He can mutate you. We need to keep an eye on our mutations, because that's one of the number one ways you can die if you get the worst types of mutations and don't realize it. I have to remember that I don't heal very well, actually. Okay, so I'm um, very funny about the castle island she met. Um, how many mutations? I have five mutation potions. Man, I'm going to just keep my crappy mutations. Wish we had more magic mapping. That'd be nice. Uh oh. Fog. Aha, downstairs. Alright, disc seven. This would be a good place to magic map, because I don't know exactly where the rune's gonna be. I think it's actually north though in this layout. Oh, okay. One of the biggest enemies in the game, uh, one of the most dangerous enemies in the game, is the Iron Giant. It's the only place in the game you'll find them, except for ziggurats. They can Iron Shot you for 3d32 damage, regardless of your GDR. That's over 90 damage, that's a lot. They can also throw allies right to you, which you can imagine gets very dangerous when there's things like uh, tormenting enemies that are now right next to you. They're also not demonic, so we're going to switch to our chopping axe to kill him. Again, chopping axe. Iron dragons also aren't evil. Whoa, how did I take that damage? Alright, the tormentor decided to torment. This is not like the hellfire guys, it's not like the hellions. Even if there's living things around like the iron dragons, they probably just won't care. They'll just torment you anyway. Blow him up, and boy, are we low on hit points. Just take a step up and to the right, because this Hell Sentinel could see us. Um, he can 
do Iron Shot for an enormous amount of damage. He can hit like a truck, 25 and then 40. Uh, and he can also hurl Hellfire for 3d20. He does up to 99 damage with his Iron Shot, by the way. Very, very strong enemy. Again, typically only seen in Dis. Let's Lamp here. This Iron Golem, this Iron Troll, like the problem with all this crap is that we aren't healing from killing it. Why don't we Ice Blast here? Killing the little Iron Imp to get some hit points back. Uh, you know what? I'm going to summon an Angel to help me out here because I'm getting wrecked. Actually, I have to heal wounds because otherwise I can die. And I'm going to I'm gonna use Divine Shield. And then I'm going to... Yeah, okay, now I can't die in one hit. We're good. Just, just Cleansing Flame, kill the... Hell Sentinel, but unfortunately there's another one. So let's Acid him. Acid again. Order my boy to get the work done. This is Hurl Hellfire, so he cannot... Like he can try to Iron Shot me from here, but my Angel probably gets hit instead. He can try to Hellfire me, but because it's Hurl, not Call Down, it will explode on the Angel and not hit me. So I can just chill out for a second. Well, not anymore. Acid. Cleansing Flame. Good. Um, you know what? I'd like to paralyze this dude. And it works. Good. Good, good, good. That was a tough situation. On most characters, I would have had to have walked down into the left and probably left hell. Because that was just too much crap. Oops. Okay, check it out. I'm going to close this door. Uh, I'm going to fog. Losing flame. This is really annoying with these Quicksilver Dragons that can do 60 damage a pop. Alright, cool. Here's what I want to show off. Check this out. Close these doors. This is a perfect little place to just chill out. Uh, very funny, Adort. I like to use the old names for things because so many of these name changes are what you might call bike shedding, uh, which is a term in computer science and in development, which essentially means that you're trying to figure out what color the bike shed should be instead of how to build the bike shed. You know, it's more important that you, you try to try to actually build important things about the game or uh, you, you know mess with, mess with mechanics and make those better than to dick around with uh, with the names of things for political reasons, you know, in some cases. Yes, you are very funny. Thanks for noticing. Ha ha. Anyway, I, I rested to full, and I was in this convenient little, not exactly a kill hole, but kill space, I guess you could call it, where if hell was going to do its hell effects and dump crap on my head, I would be right next to it, and I could just start cleansing, flaming, or attacking right away. Whoa, I just accidentally moved up way too quickly. Almost so quickly that I missed the Serpent of Hell. The most dangerous Serpent of Hell. So, the Serpent of Hell is a unique enemy that can show up in one of the four hells. This time we got the Dis version, the most powerful version. He's got a sick Quicksilver Bolt breath that he can do uh, probably like 60 damage to me with, I assume. Uh, it's not going to show it to me because he's different depending on which hell he's in. Suffice to say he's incredibly dangerous. He also has a Crystal Sphere that probably does like 120 20 damage. Uh, why don't we... Pop on our Divine Shield. That'll help a lot. Get out of this water. Like an angel. Well, we're now sick, so we don't regenerate until that's over. That happened from a hell effect. Let's make a box of beasts. We get a primal weird ox beast. This will be very helpful. Make another one. Call upon the power of Pokemans. Uh, we're going to acid to debuff him, because look at his AC, man. That's outrageous. It's only one serpent per run. Yep, that's correct. Check it out. So, this is a weird targeter, right? If I try to go here, it's going to hit my, my beast. I don't want that. If I try to go here, it won't hit the serpent at all. If I try to go way over here, I guess I could do this, but again, it's going to hit my beast. It seems like I can't do it until I bring it to this square right here, and then I press enter. Didn't get the, def the effect on him. I really want to nuke his AC. Bolt of Acid hits the Serpent of Hell, but does no damage. Damn. 
Serpent of Hell is splashed with acid. The acid corrodes the Serpent of Hell. Perfect. He is also not considered evil or undead. He's just a dragon. Big old dragon. So Cleansing Flame will do less damage to him. Holy will do no extra damage to him. So on and so forth. Um, normally I would buff up for this fight. But I think I can just take him. Let's switch to our Chopping Axe. Whoo! He just tried to um, Crystal Spear me. He did hit me with the Bolt of Dispelling Energy, which sucks. Take away all your buffs, you know. But not... It won't take away my Divine Shield, apparently. Alright, here we go. You carve the Serpent of Hell like a ham. Tasty ham. Wait a minute. I lied to you just now. The Angel hits the Serpent of Hell with a plus three Sacred Scourge of Holy Wrath. The Serpent of Hell convulses. He is considered demonic. Okay, I could have been using Holy for way more damage. My bad. Will killing him increase the enchant on Wormbane? I'm pretty sure, yeah, of course. It's a, he's, a, he's a dragon. Did you say you wanted to see a character dump? I can link that. No problem. Copy link address. Here you go, friend. Hope you find that helpful. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was really dangerous, and I'm surprised that I forgot that he is, in fact, demonic. Curious. Gargoyles aren't. Anyway, I'm rotted, so we'll drink a potion of curing. We're going to close this door. We're going to rest a bit. Oh, you ended up asking sequel on IRC. Well, it may not be... I still have to press the button to... Whoops. Let myself get tormented there. Sometimes you have to manually update it. Or else it won't be updated. Here we go. Trog, Trog's voice booms out, feel my wrath. You pass out. Being paralyzed is horrible, but luckily nothing is around. And eventually, after enough of these angry wrath effects, it'll say, Trog seems mullified. I do control O, and he's, he's white now. So he's good to go. Like the rest of these people who are not mad at me, uh, he's got a white colored text. So... That means that there will never ever be any more Trog Wrath in the game unless I were to worship Trog and abandon him again. Uh oh, let's... Let's use Divine Shield. Oh god, this is a lot of damage possible. Um, technically we could die here. Because they can do 99 damage a shot with their Iron Shot. This is very stupid, so we're going to blink away. That was really dumb of me to go right up in there. Let's uh, evoke fog now so they can't hellfire me. Let's make some angels. Okay, take a step back. Let them fight. This is, this is fine. Just got a little ahead of myself there. This little statue is in the way, so I cannot actually be killed here. Let's Ice Blast this so it hits all of them. Now we can technically die again. I will drink a Heal Wounds to make sure that doesn't happen. Cleansing Flame, Cleansing Flame, he goes down. Good. So the goal there was to make sure there's never a turn where I could simply just, like, bite the dust on account of a high roll on two Iron Shots or whatever. Let's, uh, evoke Fog, because there's an Ice Fiend coming. Sometimes you'll see enemies that are... I didn't mean to step to the right there. Um, you'll see enemies that are from other hells, like the Ice Fiend doesn't really belong here, but he'll show up anyway. Close the store. Just trying to get to full hit points here. This Angel's lasting a really long time, because TSO does that, basically. He'll let your dudes stay for longer than they otherwise would. Secret Summoner God. Here we go. Despotter, Lord of the Iron City, comes into view. He's wielding the plus four staff of Despotter, one of my favorite items in the game, even if it's not that useful. He used to have a better tile than this. Not to say this tile is bad, I just think that it's very brushy and doesn't fit with DCSS and ends up looking silly on account of it. He hits like a truck, he has 448 damage. Uh, he is the greatest of the Lords of Hell, like everybody else except for Antaeus. Despotter was born when first an iron sword drank mortal blood. They... That's stupid as hell. He despises mortal vanities, the pursuit of reason and beauty. The only art he enjoys is the art of war. Um, 
I think, yeah, I think Despotter is a, a real mythological figure who is very much a guy, I'm pretty sure. Um, well, again, it's all political with DCSS. They they went, and it, and, it, and it especially doesn't make sense when you're talking about a mythological figure that actually exists. I'll give you an example. Um, Sojobo is a real um, Asian myth, I think Japanese, about a Tengu who is definitely male, uh, and they just decided to make it queen of the Tengu. So I just don't play along with that garbage. They, they think it's called slacktivism is what it is, where they think that they're making some kind of political point by messing around with the with the sexuality or the gender or whatever of of the uh, things in the game, but it doesn't make a lot of... I mean, when you're talking about a character that actually exists in real life as a myth, an existing myth, it strikes me as incredibly lazy and sort of insulting to my intelligence, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, Dante's Inferno, there you go. Um, right. That was one of the levels. This was actually one of the levels of... Wasn't that for Liars, right? That level of hell was for Liars, I think. Need to read that again. It was really good. I know Kukitas was also in uh, Dante's Inferno. Yeah, I know. I know, right? Road shenanigans. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited in my, in my roguelike video game that I have to have this shit shoved down my throat, you know? Um, and then if you complain about it, then, then you're somehow the asshole. It's like, gee, okay, great. But anyway, this is um, this guy does a lot of damage. So let's take a look. Um, 3d20, that's standard for Hellfire. It doesn't really change with your number of hit dice. But the Crystal Spear, hot diggity dog, um, 35. So 95, 100, 105 damage possible. Basically the same for the Iron Shot, about 90. Um, Jay of Karen, it's, it's because certain devs think that they're they're pushing they're doing something good for their personal politics by putting this crap into the game um and they basically everyone is rolling their eyes at it unless they already agree with the devs in question and i'm especially rolling my eyes at it when when you take a character that already exists and you try to change it to make some kind of an asinine point which i'm not very interested in because i'm just trying to play a goddamn game you know <laughs> it's a little frustrating i have to say from my perspective, um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, but anyway, so this dude also summons greater demons, kind of a theme with the um, the lords of, of the four hells, except for Antaeus. Antaeus doesn't summon anything, I don't think. He just kind of hits like a truck. Although he's not a uh, he's not a demon, so he's the odd man out, isn't he? Uh, also abjuration. I've ignored this, but it makes your summons go away, so... This angel will probably disappear before too long. Alrighty, so let's just go in. Alright, oh, he has brimstone fiends near him. Let's go out. Let's put on uh, divine shield. Let's see if we can lure his ass out away from his brimstone fiends. Yeah, there we go. Block the crystal spear. Hell yeah. I completely failed in my mission to get away from the brimstone fiend. Let's evoke fog so he has to walk towards me. Um, let's cleansing flame to kill the brimstone fiend there we go now as much as as much as a big boy as this guy seems like he's not so big that he can't be netted he <laughs> he um so let's uh wand of acid him now cutting his ac down to what's still pretty enormous levels um now we're gonna swing on him the power of hell defeated by a net i'll just finish him off with the cleansing flame Staff of Despotter. So I said this was one of my favorite items, and it's actually not that useful because by the time you get it, you're so strong that you beat Dis, so what do you need it for? Um, but it lets you Hellfire enemies for absolutely redonkulous damage. If you've got 27 evokes especially, you can one-shot almost anything in the game or two-shot pretty much everything. It takes some of your hit points away when you use it, though. And I'm not allowed to use it at all because TSO says, nope, that's contraband. So we'll fight our way through these wimpy little iron golems. Actually, I'll just walk away from them. No reason to fight. Let's give me a loot pile, bruh. Uh, take the ring. I don't want that. Take the book. I don't care about that. Take the rune. I want that. Grand Gormor. What a nice book that we're not using. Man of Autumn Combat. We don't need that. A steaming bone ring is garbage. And another book. We'll just teleport away. 
Hey, good telly. Getting good tellies today. Just to hasten my exit from this place. Hello, CC late LOL. How you doing, my friend? We just finished up hell. You should always collect nets. Saving consumables isn't a great practice, though. Um, the thing is that I you tend to find so many nets in the game. Even if you... Like, I actually found zero nets this entire game until I got to Zot. But Zot 5, I think, is guaranteed to have a bunch of net traps in it. So if you have a way to blink, you can go into the net trap and then blink out on purpose without moving. Otherwise, uh, if you try to move without without blinking, you'll, you might damage the net and destroy it. Um, so instead you blink, the net's left behind, you grab it, and I harvested like eight nets, and it's just kind of a free thing you can do. So I don't really save them, no. I use them if I need them throughout the game. Um, nets can be an absolutely incredible survival tool in the early game. Like, gladiators start with nets, and you could save your life against somebody like, let's say, uh, Sigmund, you can net his ass as soon as you see him if it's too early for you to fight him, and that helps you get away. Do teleport scrolls also let you escape nets? Yes, uh, and it will not damage them. So if you have a bunch of tallies, you can do that. Although there are situations where you might not want to do that, like if it's a floor you haven't explored yet, or if you're like in a gauntlet, you can't do that because tally's not allowed. Anywho, um, there's our four runes of hell. Typically, you would do Pandemonium now. I'm going to go ahead and do Tomb. Ordinarily, we would save that for last, but this character is strong enough to do Tomb. This is probably the most complicated place in the game. Um, we found more enchant armors? Nope. Okay. I have my reasons, Adort. We're, we're strong enough to do anything, so I might as well for one. And for two, I... I would like to I would like to have the ziggurat icon, uh, ziggurat figurine. You're a loose cannon, <laughs> Alright, so Tomb looks the exact same every single game. Uh-oh, we've been marked. Let's, let's go back to the staircase. So you get you start in a corner with the crypt. You know, you come from the crypt. Check it out. Mummy Priest. Here's one of the main enemies here. He can torment you, he can summon undead, he can smite you. Every time you kill a greater mummy, so a priest, a greater mummy, a uh, mummy guardian, you get what's called a death, is called a death curse. And sometimes it does nothing like this. Sometimes it'll torment you. Sometimes it'll take away your stats. There's all kinds of crap that it does. These sphinxes are always in the front of the tomb on the first floor. They can paralyze you. They can smite you for a lot of damage. It's just fog, so not so many of them are smiting me at the same time. They're animals, but I'm cleansing flaming them anyway. There's going to be liches in here. We all know liches. There's Ushabtis in here. Uh, they're kind of like little doll things that can dispel undead and can dump uh, miasma on your head, which can slow you and do enormous damage. There it is. Foul pestilence, it's called. But we are sitting sort of in a fog cloud, so can't can't dump that on my head if I'm already in fog, bro. Death Scarabs move really fast. They will slow you if they hit you. They also do a lot of damage. But if you have Cleansing Flame, it kills them basically instantly. Death Curses are really dangerous because, like, you'll take damage from them. You'll be slowed by them. So a lot of really ugly things can happen. You could be rotted from them. But the biggest thing is Stat Zero. You don't want to go to Stat Zero. CC late lol quick question sorry I'm new to crawl is seam the CKUO equivalent of beam yeah so um, that's called an info bot and basically there is some sort of history behind that um, beam was the first one but then the developer who runs beam gamma funk decided to ban like half the player base from using his bot for political reasons and basically because he didn't like those people and so I made a bot called meme uh, to counteract that, because I think it's silly to ban people from info services for basically any reason, unless they're abusing the bot somehow. Uh, and then Floraline, the guy who runs Kelby, decided that he um, wanted to run his own bot to avoid um, the, the ban situation as well. Uh, and then Gamma Funk threw a giant fit when he found out that happened, and he took... Uh, he took he took beam off of Kelby, so now there's only seam here. So there's your there's your history lesson for the day. 
Uh, here's that trick I'm gonna t I was telling you about. Here's net traps. I'm in the net. I evoke blink, and now I get a free net. Pretty cool, right? I'm in the net. I evoke blink. I get a free net. Just keep doing that. Don't try to move or you break it. Get a free net. No problem, CC. Paralyze is probably the worst death curse. Uh, you cannot be paralyzed by death curses. However, you can be paralyzed by Zot Traps, which do exist in Tomb, so it's a big pain. Alright, Obsidian Statues just summon demons and they can mesmerize you to pull you close to them. We can pretty much just kill it. Do, do, do. Mastered Invocations, hell yeah. Alright, I have nothing I really care about training further at this point, so I'm just going to turn on all the stuff I care about, uh, except for shields. And we'll just leave this all on for the rest of the game, I guess. No, you do not. You do not auto struggle. You have to actually physically try to move. Press a directional key. Of a blink. Okay. So as I was saying, Tomb always has the exact same layout, almost the exact same layout every single game. This sort of inner part of the tomb will be slightly different, but oh wait, that's a net. Blink. Um, these walls are stone, not rock, so I cannot dig through them even if I had a wand. I would need extremely high level magic. With that said, if I did have high level magic, uh, I could shatter my way through, and it'd be, it would be a very interesting way of doing to, because, and I'll have to kind of show this rather than tell it, as you go down, you will also have to come back up. So check it out. You'll notice that there's a lot of black area here, unknown area. This is not solid. I'll end up inside the inner workings of this, you'll see. You also see this staircase looks rather different. It says a one-way staircase leading down. Uh-oh. Before I do all this, I'm going to stop being a big dummy. Ouch. There's that torment. I'm going to stop being a big dummy, and we're going to go back to those shops real quick. and buy everything on the shopping list, because we have tons of money now, so... Oops, I just bought invisibility. <laughs> That's useless to me. Uh oh It's fine. There's this ring. Um... Hold on a second. Now I need the MR. Hmm... We haven't even messed with our items in a really long time because it's all been essentially perfect, but I forgot I had this cool ring lying around. I'm trying to buy this sack of spiders here. Okay. Um, enchant armor? Still only four. I think we'll stick with our... With our low, with our low AC, I guess. So you'll notice my Ent is already in kind of a bad place, a little scary. It's one of the reasons I'm doing Tomb first, is so I can gain experience elsewhere and get those stats back. If need be, I can dip into Pandemonium. Alright, so this is a one-way staircase, so there's going to be an ambush waiting for me here, so I'm going to burn a haste first thing. Um, I am going to burn Hagi, I guess, and I'm going to burn a Might. And we're going to go down now. Let me think about this. So these greater, uh, excuse me, guardian mummies are not very difficult to kill. They uh, just kind of hit a little bit hard, but they die easy. The big thing is the death curse. When you kill those, they're going to make a bunch of stuff. Lost my net for a minute. What happened? Nothing really happened. I just ran around and got, uh, I just bought stuff. Thank you for the follow, CC Late. I just bought stuff from shops and now we're going down into tomb too. Uh, alright, so I'm gonna shout. I'm gonna actually try to fight all of this in the same spot. So this is an ambush, and here we go. Here's the biggest enemy in this, uh, branch. We've got a greater mummy. So he can smite you, he can torment, he can, uh, summon undead, he can summon scarabs. It depends on what book he has, but he can always smite you, and he can always torment you. And that's a lot of torment, man. That's like, it only cuts my hit points by 35%, but there's four of them. I don't want to eat that. So, there's a few options. I could kind of blink around and try to avoid all this, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. It's Lorax time, baby. 
Uh, and we're just going to shout a bit. And I told you something about tree form. Like, yeah, my evasion is garbage. But that's fine. Because guess what? Guess what? I can't be tormented. So we're just going to kill this stuff and have no problem doing it. We might get smited a bit, but that's fine. Uh, fast plus slow. Got death cursed into being slow. Oh, we have a bunch of ligs. We have ten ligma. So we'll just swing on these dudes who ordinarily would be dominating me. But uh, they're not dominating me. I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm just going to Cleansing Flame. Now, there is one danger of doing this. If an Ush Ushabdi shows up, like like this one has, he's going to want to breathe on me. But, you know, I can read a fog to stop that from happening. I can kill him really fast to stop that from happening. Like, I could... Well, I can't paralyze him because he's magic immune. But I could use, like, a file of floods in order to attack... Maybe like Ice Blast. There we go. So kill him really fast. I can make a fog on myself to stop the... Because like in tree form you can't move, right? So it's really dangerous sort of to, to end up not being able to move with that with that miasma just like sucking your life away, right? And you can do it from pretty much anywhere on the screen at 7 range. So it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm a netted tree. Uh, I'm gonna have to break this one. I can't blink while I'm in tree form. Some marked, but I don't care. Boom. I'm slow, but I still don't really care. The only thing I care about is, is getting... Death rattled here. Oh, man. I think I'm gonna burn a fog so I don't get death rattled. I hate to do that. Sadly, I can't evoke fog right now because my, as a tree, oh wait, I'm not a tree anymore. Okay, I'm, it must have run out. That's okay. Anyway, as a tree, I can't evoke fog because that cloak is melded. So I'm, I was stepping back here to avoid, check it out. See how the miasma isn't on me even though it's behind me? It's because I'm standing in a fog cloud. You can't replace fog. I could have blinked with the blink mutation for HP. Nope, you cannot blink under any circumstances as a tree. Doesn't work. I'll show you. See? Trees are, uh, they have a stasis. Stasis mod. Stasis uh, mutation, I guess you would say. Here comes everybody, I guess. Oh, damn, I need to... We're gonna... hold on, are these guys resistant to electricity? Yeah, they are, so we're going to acid him, and he dies. Uh-oh! I almost got... I almost got miasmed. No, it's, I think it's actual stasis. I wonder if I can... Huh, it doesn't seem to say... I guess I could probably look at the potion and it would tell me. I'm pressing I and then scrolling down. I for inventory. I'm pressing C because that's the slot the Ligna is on. Rooted in place while the transformation lasts and cannot teleport. Okay, well it can't blink either. Oh, that's my boy Khufu. Khufu, the Undying Pharaoh, is a unique greater mummy. You can see him in a few different places, but especially in the tomb. He's just a greater mummy on steroids, basically. Nothing too scary about him. Only unique thing is he can do the Tomb of Dora, Dora Chloe, which makes him uh, summon a little tomb on top of himself where he gets to sort of... It's like a, it's like if you put walls all, all around the character. That's what he does, and then he rests a full, and then he comes out, and he is ready for action again. Ice Blast. Ice Blast. Ice Blast. Man, the Ushaptis have been really friendly today. Thank you, Ushaptis. Any fog for sale? Nope, just one. Just one in my inventory. I'm pretty sure tree is stasis, yeah. Oh, wait, no. No, 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 you're right. Tree is not stasis, because stasis would protect you from para. And I don't think trees are protected from para. That's the difference. So it's just minus tally. You're right. These are Binus. They attack with uh, with a holy attack. So if you're undead and you think you're having a grand old time in Tomb and you're just unstoppable, 
they might come and wreck your face, although we're not afraid of him at all, really. Let's drink a curing to get this rot off. Okay, so notice that these, both of these, are upstairs. One of them is going to take me to the place where I haven't been before. The other one would take me somewhere out in the area I've already been. Hate the fact that there's a Zot Trap here, really, really dangerous. We went up and we have already been on this floor before, so they got a turn. I'm gonna have to go into tree form because we've already been tormented. Hopefully I don't get Zot Trapped um, too horribly. Bear in mind I can still be flayed. This is actually very bad. Why don't we use a Lamp of Fire so we're getting some damage on these guys even if we get paralyzed? All right, already flayed. Let's cleansing flame. Okay, good. We didn't kill the flayed ghost, but we killed its master. And that means that he goes away, and that means the flay effect goes away. Yeah, you can circus. Oh, that's true, yeah. Angry tree. Very good early game combo, actually. Okay, who owns this thing? It's this guy in the back. Damn. Um, why don't we make a divine warrior? Whoa, did I fail? What happened? I don't see an angel. What? Oh, wait, they have abjuration, don't they? I'm trying to see where it is that I summon my, my angel, but I don't see it. You see a puff of smoke. Huh, it's like it tried to spawn it in the wall and failed, I see. Interesting. Torment immunity does not block flay. Nope, 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 nope. Being undead blocks flay, but just torment immunity from being a tree does not. Okay, we are going to Acid to kill that Flayed Ghost, because that's a big danger. Okay, now we're just going to Cleansing Flame. Nice. Pile of Floods. We'll get that back really quickly. Let them fight the stuff for me, I guess. Ooh, what was that flash? Oh, it was just stuff fighting off screen. Cleansing Flame. Notice how we're taking almost no damage here. If I was trying to do this outside of tree form, we would be dead like 500 times over by now. It's extremely dangerous, by the way, that I'm doing this by this Zot Trap. A lot of really ugly things could happen from Zot Effects. Whew. Uh, we have our lamp back, so let's use that again. Um, we'll Ice Blast this. Power of Zod is invoked against me. Huge Vortex of Air appears. That's interesting. That'll do damage to all the enemies around here as well. Oh wait, I'm not in tree form anymore. Whoa-oh! You know what? This is... I've had enough fun in here for one moment. Let's teleport. Yeah, yeah, you can... There we go. I was going to say you can torment me again if you want to, but I'm going to end up out here. Nine times out of ten teleports will land you outside into one, uh, not inside, and the reason is there's just so much more real estate. Sometimes the nets just land on the ground next to you, by the way, so even if you don't have blink, you can still kind of farm a couple nets from net traps if you're lucky. Zot Trap triggers... Um, it can trigger any number of times in a fight if things keep walking on them. So check this out. If I take this way up, it sends me where I've already been. I'm going to do this without lignification. If it's only one greater mummy, I feel pretty okay about it. Or if it's like one at a time. Damn, that's so many greater mummies. So tough. Luckily, I have like the best weapon in the game for dealing with them. Le holy weapon. Fog blink. Ouch. I should have fogged. Ouch. Very close to death. Drink curing. Fog this time. Be smart. Shouting. Cleansing flaming. Treating these a lot like we treated the brimstone fiend, see? 
could I have blinked onto it on... Oh, I see. Yeah, I could have activated it just... That's an interesting idea, activating it on purpose. I, I would have had to have spent a blink scroll to do that, which I like to save. Um, but yeah, I, I could see that. You mean like becoming a tree while on the Zot Trap? Yeah, that would have stopped it from happening more than once for sure. Imagine if I had been paralyzed while not in uh, tree form, though. Being paralyzed in tree form here is not exactly a death sentence, right? But being paralyzed out of tree form, whew. That's a big time, big time no-no, because you're going to be sucking down torments left and right. Sentinel's mark, that's fine. We've cleared most of the floor. Cool. Cool, okay. So you'll, you'll see that the basic MO here is you see a greater mummy, you fog, you let it come next to you, and then you start cleansing flaming until it's absolutely next to you, and then you swing on it. Um, if you don't have enough fogs, you don't have very many fogs, you don't have to burn them every time, you might do things like, oh, I saw, let's say there was a guardian mummy right here, and I didn't have, I didn't want to spend a fog. Instead, I could just walk backwards, shout a bit from this corner, stand over here, and then I've minimized more or less, because he has to come over here, and he'll probably end up in this square. Worst case scenario, he ends up in this square. But if he's here, I can start cleansing flaming. If he's here, I can take a step forward, I guess. Or I could just, like, acid wand him or ice blast him or something. You know. Try to spend most of your turns where they can damage you, damaging them. Alright, so we're on Tomb 1, we go back down after that little gauntlet, and we end up in Tomb 2. You can step out of this miasma if you're not in tree form, and simply not get affected by it. Crap, we're slow. Uh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna evoke fog, then we're gonna tree form. We have a lot of tree form, so it's okay. Remember why we use the fog is because we don't want the miasma to be on top of me as a tree. Not very much on this portion of Tomb 2, and now finally we are on the verge of Tomb 3. I'm a little worried because my stats are in not the best place. I think we're going to grab this scimitar. Whoa, hello, what's this? Cursed minus six large shield. Low, low down. The minus six large shield low down. All right. Can't take the hatch up. Yeah, we have brilliance, but that doesn't last very long. What? I think the auto travel is broken. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, I don't want to go to lowdown. I want to go to uh, int plus six scimitar. This is just so I can swap to it if I have an int problem, you see. I'm not really going to want to use it, of course. But it is going to keep me from getting riggedy riggedy wrecked, you know. Uh, let's go to tomb three. Well, tomb, tomb two anyway. Control G, W, hold on, Control G, W for Tomb, I don't know why it's a W, Tomb 2. Let me just wait. Seems like nothing's happening, but I am auto-traveling. Stopped because I'm feeling hungry. Eat all my food, Control G, enter. My current one has RC+, plus. I don't need RN+, plus from Shield of Ignorance, so essentially I'd be trading, I'd be trading a pip of RC+, plus for two points of SH, which... With this much SH, it's not worth it. Also, yeah, the int is uh, extremely terrifying. Probably would be using it if I had like 30 int or something, or 20 int even. But I'm so low on it that I don't want to. I don't want to risk. 
you would do abyss at this point for stats. I agree, but I'm trying to keep this as streamlined as possible. But he he is right. Enchi Matt is right that you, at this point in the game, you probably would, um, you probably would want to do abyss. But I think we're okay. And if not, then I'll uh, I'll eat crow, I guess. Any magic mapping? Ah, crap. I'm not going back for that. I should, but I'm not gonna. Uh, we're gonna drink haste. We're gonna drink uh, might. I'm not gonna bother with agi because I'm probably gonna be in tree form. And we're gonna go down. So we immediately end up uh, in a hallway. We're gonna kill this guy real fast. Walk south, and you see there's a ton of stuff, right? I don't actually want to fight here, though. Um, actually, I would like to fog so I can't see that Zot Trap. It didn't work. Damn it. Let's go down. Let's go down. Please don't disperse me. I want to open one of these doors, and what I want to do is I want to use a blink and end up on this upstair, because I didn't start with an upstair. Remember, these are one-way staircases. I really would like to fight here instead. So we swing. And we can fight some of these regular guys. Uh, I hate the fact that there is a Zot Trap here. Damn it. Um, very dangerous. Oak Fog. I guess I could try that. So you'll feel suddenly drained of magical energy. Okay. Alright, new meme. Fight on the Zot Trap. That wasn't bad. If we had been paralyzed, would we have died? Probably not, but maybe, depending on what the priest and the raider mummy did. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. Cool play. Uh, instead, ordinarily, what we would do is fight on the staircase and then leave as soon as there was a problem. But we're going to lignify here. And since we can't be Zot Trapped anymore, just... I, I really hate the fact that Paralyze is possible. From Zot Traps, it's quite silly. Just swing. Okay, now we're going to Cleansing Flame a lot. I would really like to kill this Ancient Champion so he can't hit me for a million damage with his Iron Shot. Lady Luck didn't give you the finger. It's pretty unlikely, but yeah, it is, it is a pain. Now, as a Formacid, that's definitely a good play, although without Paralyze being possible, it's uh, less dangerous to deal with Zot Traps. Although they can still summon top-tier demons on your head, which is certainly something. Okay, Acid Wand. I still want to kill the Ushoptis first, if possible. Um, because technically, they can land a Miasma, and the first hit of it will still hit me, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't put Fog on my head. Speaking of Fog, uh, I want to burn one of my Fog Scrolls to keep that on top of me. So, like, I won't be taking tons of damage over time as long as there's fog on top of me because the, the miasma won't land and stick. But the first hit can still hit me. Let's, uh... Let's haste again. We ran out of haste. Let's ice blast, killing the Ushabtis. We can still be slowed, is what I'm trying to say. When these Ushabtis breathe on me. Attack, attack. You know what we could be doing is we could have angels helping out. Don't have enough magic for angels, okay. Just swing. We will acid. It's a lot of Ushabdis, wow. How many runes am I going for? I am doing 15 runes because I'm demonstrating how to do how to do 15 runes on your basic maybe swap into TSO, which is kind of the standard, I guess, way of uh, doing this. Find warrior, get another angel. Kind of really helps to have allies here. And again, even under TSO, who gives you all that resist negative, you need to have a way to be immune to torment, or you're going to have a kind of a rough time in here. We're having a very good time in here because we can't be tormented, but imagine how quickly my hit points would be going down going going downtown if I uh, wasn't immune to torment uh oh my fears have been realized I'm standing in a miasma cloud but my my tree form ended at the exact perfect time so let's take a step uh, sadly not on the Zot trap anymore let's fog let's move over here I'm gonna be a tree again 
so that's that's just what I like. Um, Blast. Uh, ice blast. Not bad. Just kind of killing things at range when we can't reach them with cleansing flame. Am I going to switch to B-Crawl if they release the new and utterly painful update? Um, I mean, I basically have switched to B-Crawl. The only thing is that I'm, I'm making a tutorial right now for the base game is all. Um, and it's not different enough from B-Crawl for it to really, you know. I mean, I guess it kind of is at this point. But the beginner play is basically the same. Identify ring. Uh... I mean, yeah, no, I probably will just switch to B crawl. There are things about B crawl that I dislike, um, and I could get into those, but it's kind of out of uh, scope of this. Cloak of going fast, R and plus, strength minus two, stealth plus. Don't need that. Figurine of the Ziggurat. You're always going to find one of these in Tomb Three. Yeah, yeah, the new acquirement in vanilla is probably the only change that I like in point two five. All right, so this figurine you're always going to find one in Tomb Three. A small figure on made of fi figure on, a small figurine made of a, some strange material shaped like a stepped pyramid. It is remarkably detailed, almost like a real vast structure, shrunk somehow smaller than a human hand. Uh, you can use this by evoking it. Don't need to hold it. You just press the V, capital V, and well, I have to actually have it in my inventory. Capital V, and I can evoke it. It creates a ziggurat right behind you. And then you can enter it the next turn, so it's actually a very cool escape ability. Very, very powerful. I can drop the scimitar now. I'm not going to have ent problems again, most likely. Identify, ring. Well, I might actually end Manolite's lair, so maybe I should pick that up again. Identify, chainmail I don't care about. Not very high defense. Maxwell's etheric cage, can't wear that. My hat, uh, my helmet slot is covered in horns. This guy's alone, we can just kill him. Okay, so in tomb three, there's gonna be two giant loot piles. That one, and then there's one over here. It's almost like an insult. Whoa, that zot trap teleported me immediately. Guess it's time to be a tree again. Got a little hasty there. Oh man. Uh, let's AA, let's Divine Shield because this dude is hasted and he could very easily iron shot me for a lot of damage. Just in time to hit level 27 armor skill. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could just trade nothing but armor and make good use of the manual. All right, I'm netted, but I really just want a cleansing flame anyway and nets don't stop me from doing that. So let's just do that. It's not like I have any evasion really. I need this. Okay, there we go. I was going to say, I, I, it takes my SH to zero, actually. I should have wriggled out of it. My bad. Tree form again. Actually, that was quite dangerous. My fiance just brought me a giant box of pistachios. I guess she really listened to me when I said I love pistachios. I didn't. Uh, she must have went to the store while I was streaming, I guess. Often single train whatever skill I have. A manual for just to clear the inventory slot. I wish they would make manuals not take a slot like how they did for spellbooks. I agree entirely. Um, it feels incredibly silly to me that it takes a slot at this point. You know, um, wow, that must have been very loud in the microphone. Sorry, it's me opening up the pistachios. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that it's, you're right, it's just a quality of life thing. There's no particular reason for it to take up a slot. There's no tactical reason, really. Um, why inconvenience the player for a certain amount of time uh, and stop them from being able to carry some other valuable item um, just because? It's just kind of a throwback, I guess. Anyway, let's go ahead and pick up the rune, I suppose. Do, 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 do. There it is. Golden rune of Zot. Of Zot. So what I was saying was these loot piles are almost an insult because it's like, this is the last, really the last part of the game you're going to do typically. This is one of the reasons why I did it before Pan, even though that's not generally what you do. Uh, hey, there's an artifact shield here. Is it any good? It's really good. Our lack, our poison, Sinv. We don't really need any of that. We already have all of that, but that would let me take this hat off. Because it would give me Sinv and Aralek. That would mean that I would have more intelligence, which is quite nice. Then I could wear the Hat of Magic Resistance. I could enchant that up. And that would let me take off one of these rings. Although I don't want to take off these rings. I could take off an amulet. I'd be losing a lot of slay. What could I gain from that? Nothing really. <laughs> amulet of Vitality, I guess. Confusing touch is possibly improved in Trunk. Check some more instead of hit dice. No, that's not an improvement. That's a huge, huge debuff, actually. Checking hit dice allowed you to confuse things regardless of how much MR they had, which was really, really good. I mean, as far as is it an improvement to the game, I don't know. I do know it's incredibly silly that they took out the confused spell. Let's, let's drop scrolls of identify. I'm not really going to need to identify anything else, I guess. I really want to have this scimitar with me because the int... There's a place in the game remaining that can damage my int really hard. I'm not going to fool with any of the equipment changes. I'm going to stick with what I've got. Although this, re this shield does represent like the opportunity to make some changes with my equipment. I think I'm pretty happy with the way... I mean, if you look at your inventory screen and you see this, you know, over here, up like the top left with the, sh the resistances, if you see everything's covered, you're probably doing something right. Like everything covered plus C invisible. Hard to go wrong. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, minor optimizations possible, but um, it's whatever. Let's uh, blink. Oh, we blinked onto a Zot Trap, which immediately did fire damage to us. We have 17 throwing nets. I don't need to farm up more of those. That's more than enough. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's that's Tomb. And like I said, you typically do this as the very last thing, making the loot piles kind of superfluous. But um, this character was able to do it long before that, mainly because of TSO. TSO gave us the power. We're heavily rotted. 241 hit points out of 253. So let's drink two curings and take that back to full. Um... Alrighty, um, look at our rune situation, and it looks like we're missing a lot, right? Like, wow, five runes, and then one in Abyss, six runes total, but we'll get these really fast. Check it out. Let's leave Tomb. Do, do, do. We're going to search for panned. We see that there are lots of pan portals, and... Just for style points. Reflect is never necessary, but it's really gratifying to see ranged dudes kill themselves on your reflection. That's true, JF Karen. I would agree with that. Um, I'd say the SH that you get from reflect amulets is better than the reflect power itself. All right, just for style points, we're going to take the pan portal in orc. You would never do this when you're in orc 2 for the first time, but otherwise it functions exactly the same as any other pan portal. Okay, so you enter the halls of pandemonium, and here's how it works. There are infinite floors of pandemonium. Some floors will contain a rune. Some floors will just contain a crap load of demons who want to eat you. Most floors are going to just contain a crap load of demons who want to eat you. For each floor that you visit, you're more likely to find a pan rune floor. Floors will be themed. There will be certain kinds of demons only in them. Sometimes you'll have a holy pan floor that actually has holy monsters like angels in it. Uh, watch out for these yellow dudes. They can malmutate you. I don't want to be malmutated, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a file of floods, 
Sadly, it did not place elementals between me and him. Let's make a demon, try to swap places with him, try to keep a guy between me and the Cacodemon. So I have this Deva here who is kind of helping. Ouch, got tormented. Hey, that's surprising. Okay, so the demonic rune is special. Usually if you go into a region or a, a floor, I guess, of pandemonium, what you'll get is a message and it'll say, hey, there's a rune here, you can get it. Uh, but the demonic rune, as far as I know, unless they change, this is unannounced. So sometimes it's just sort of there. Typically there will be a pan lord guarding it. There's going to be a pan lord on every single floor. We've seen pan lords before because I showed you one when I was in that ziggurat. This floor, I guess the pan lord wandered off, and I'm cool with that because I don't want to fight him. I already got his rune. Demonic rune is guarded by a random pan lord, right? Uh, every other pan lord or every other rune is guarded by a unique pan lord that will be the same every single time. But this one is guarded by a random pan lord, and uh, if I take his rune without killing him, there's no penalty. Uh, there will be a bit of a penalty uh, if I try to do the same thing with a different kind of uh, rune. Like if I go to, let's say, the fiery rune of Zot, and I take the rune and I don't kill its guardian, Sarabov, Sarabov will then follow my ass throughout other floors of Pandemonium until I kill him or he kills me. Uh, he'll also follow me on the orb run. So I find it best to kill them if possible. Oh, wait a minute. Um, check this out. An exit through the horrors of the abyss. So I could take that portal and end up in the abyss. And then after I cleared out, uh, after I got out of the abyss, I would be able to be back in the dungeon. But we don't want to leave Pan yet. We want to keep wandering Pan, looking for the rune. Here's a, a monster that's sort of unique to Pan. So you'll have these um, half mortal, half demonic creatures. They're demon spawns. And they're going to have different classes. Um, a gelid blood saint. Gelid is uh, cold. I see, I guess. He can fireball you, iceball you, ghostly fireball you. He can call of chaos, which can do wacky things to his allies. These guys have some strange little abilities. He actually mited this Loro Saproka, who hits like a truck even without being mited, but luckily I have big boy tanking abilities. Monstrous Black Sun, he can drain you, he can black mark you, which uh, debilitates you when you get attacked by him or his allies. So it uh, can basically make you attack less powerfully or it can take away your mana or it can sap you, which makes you crappier at casting spells. So you kind of have to take a look at these demon spawn, but typically you'll just roll right over them. They're generally the popcorn of this place. How many times have I killed Boris? Zero. He hasn't shown up, I don't think, on this, uh, on this run. So every floor, every single pan floor, will have portals to the next level. Typically, and this is probably it, there'll be a little area, yeah, this just sometimes has rune doors and there will be the pan lord waiting for you there. And he'll have a random name if it's not a rune level. This one is Kalkusel, not to be confused with Cow Incel. Uh, and they have randomized spells and it's very dangerous, but this guy doesn't look very tough. I guess his force lance probably does good damage. Let's take a step down. Let's close the door. Boris can spawn after you pick up the orb now. It's wacky. They're going to need to buff him for that to be meaningful. We're just going to take a step down. We want to avoid getting we want to avoid getting the Shadow Fiend Torment. Uh, one thing you always want to look at is what are the defenses of the Pan Lord, because those are randomized too. This guy's pretty mediocre, so we're just going to keep cleansing flaming him but when you're when you're playing a character like this it's it's especially important because you have ability you have an ability that bypasses evasion called cleansing flame right completely bypasses evasion just hits so if you get a pan lord with very low ac but huge evasion don't try to swing on him just cleansing flame him to death likewise if he has low evasion and high ac you probably want to swing on him it seems simple but you'd be surprised how many people don't pay attention to it now, loot can show up on these pan floors, but unless there's something you really horribly need, there's no good reason really to go hunt it down. Like, I went into this region of the abyss, didn't see anything, I'm leaving. Immediately. Um, if there's a rune on the floor, you will lose it forever. 
if you leave without getting it. So you don't want to do that. However, the game will warn you if you try to do that. It will also tell you when you enter the floor if the rune is there. And also, that rule is not in effect for the demonic rune. Better off farming Abyss than Pan if you want random consumables. JF Karen, that is 100% correct. Take the exit to the other floor of Pan. Wacky little face walls now. It's very creepy. Remember, every time I go through a floor of Pan, every time I go to a new one, there's a higher chance of me running into a rune. Um, that was a Hell Sentinel, so I'm, I'm using my fog because I, I don't want to... Uh, I wanted to be close, basically. Did I get mutated? No, I did not. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Fight this stuff. Eat some food. Try to stay engorged. There's no real reason to bother with... I mean, if you have a ton of rations at this point in the game, there's... You can just eat those and save yourself some time. Whoa, hello. Okay. Oops. Didn't mean to take a step there. Oh, there's a pan lord. Let's take a look. His name is Han. Han Solo. Uh, he has Hellfire. Uh-oh. Orb of Electricity. That's a monster-only spell. Um, summon Greater Demon. Let's try to avoid him. Let's see if we can juke his ass. We just want to get to the portal that he's hiding behind. Yeah, there it is. So we'll take a step like this so we don't get tormented by that Ice Fiend up there. Take another step. Uh, fog, because he's being obnoxious. Cleansing Flame him to death. And go in. Here we go. You pass into a different region of Pandemonium. The air is shimmering with an eerie glow. The mighty Pandemonium Lord Manoleg resides here. This guy is the Lord of Mutations. Uh, and I hate, 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 hate this floor. I really wish I had bought my magic mappings, but I'm dumb and I forgot. Uh, whoa, you enter a teleport trap and we're yanked directly to Manoleg. All right, I, that's fine, I guess. Uh, okay, there he is. So you're probably wondering, what the hell is this tile? Uh, and if you look really, really close, it's actually a jester upside down on his head. I thought it was like a tentacle beast at first. But nope, he's a jester. Upside down. Random bolt fires a random energy bolt at you. That's fine. Summon eyeballs. Horribly dangerous. He can summon floating eyes, which can paralyze you. Got to keep that in mind. Malign gateway. He can summon the very powerful tentacle thing that does chaos attacks, which again can paralyze you. Very dangerous. Summon horrible things. Just a bunch of T-mons and stuff. Not too bad. Call of chaos. We've already seen that from the demon spawn guys. He can dig through walls, so don't try to run away from him like that. In abjuration, your allies are probably not going to stick around too much. Why don't we haste... Whoa, not might. Why don't we haste immediately? Why don't we... Agi. Why don't we might... Notice how there's an awful lot of crap here that can malmutate us and drain our intelligence. Very worrying. Very worrying. So... You know what? I am going to fog... Step like this. Start cleansing flaming. Why don't we see if we can't get his ass in a net? We fail, it misses. So cleansing flame. Get his ass in a net again. Whoa, hello, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Very horribly dangerous. So he summoned eyeballs. Um and then he actually Wow. They, he hasted them. So he's not charged up, but he could, because he's hasted, well, I'm hasted too, but if I wasn't hasted, any, any action I took, floating eye could just immediately paralyze me. So we need to kill that floating eye. That's a huge priority. What we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're actually going to acid wand, because floating eyes don't have much in the way of defenses, so the acid wand is very likely to hit him, and it's probably going to hit Manoleg too, because he's in a net, so we'll do that. Bolt of acid hits the floating eye, floating eye will die instantly, very good. Um, swing on an Oleg. Swing on an Oleg. I'm being very careful. I don't want this Eldritch Tentacle to hit me, right? Take a step away. Take a step away. If he hits me, he can get that Chaos Paralysis, which is incredibly bad. Acid. Acid. Good. 
Let's make angels now. Let's make a lot of angels. <laughs> you know what? Let's check this out. You see these phantom mirrors? Ice Blast would be better. Ice Blast would be more guaranteed to do damage to the uh, Floating Eye, yes. But because I was pretty sure I would survive, I was actually sure I would survive a Paralysis. Um, well, n no. That's a great question. I don't know actually which one is more likely to happen. I would. My instinct is that Ice Blast is more likely to kill the Floating Eye than Acid, but both, both are pretty damn likely to kill it, and I wanted to do more damage to... Manoleg and cut his AC at the same time, essentially. I didn't want to waste the net time. Anyway, check out these phantom mirrors. Typically you would copy an enemy with these, but uh, you can also copy an ally. So I'm going to make... I'm going to phantom mirror my own angels, because if I tried to copy a demon, uh, TSO wouldn't let me do it, because uh, he's not a fan of demons. We're going to copy our, our little boys here. It's a neat little trick you can do with TSO. And essentially, I'm just trying to keep allies between me and the guys who can mutate the crap out of me and turn me into a horrible mutated creature, you know. We'll just let our angels do all the work here. Have them kill this tentacle as well. Although I could have just waited it out. So, wow, amazing that we got dumped here. We get the glowing rune... Still don't know where the exit is. It could be anywhere, so... Whoa, auto-explored into a Nekazek. Remember, they can drain my intelligence. They can mutate me, so... Wow, that guy actually took away my extra dex mutation. As soon as I auto-explored into him, it's really annoying. Wait, I can just attack this dude. Not that dude, but the six fur key. Got him. Got him them to attack the Cacodemon. Does not look at all like the Doom Cacodemon, but I assure you it is a Cacodemon. Uh-oh. Is my auto-explore speed set to the speed of my allies? Um, no, but my allies are as fast as me, so it doesn't matter. They're actually faster than me. Um, let's... Phantom Mirror, the Angel, having like a million angels here just to block, just to block these mutations, you know? Just keep, keep, uh, you see how I'm using my positioning to avoid most chances of me being mutated, and I'm ordering them, I'm using TA to order them to attack certain targets to sort of keep them, and you can try this out for yourself, it's a little hard to explain, uh, you know, how this, how the movement of your allies works, but if you just play around with it, if you play like a Biog worshiper or a TSO worshiper or anything really that can make allies, um, and you play around with it for about five minutes, it'll become intuitive very, very quickly when you start using TA and watch, just watch turn by turn how your allies move and you'll, you'll become pretty used to it. And the idea, of course, is to just keep one of these guys, whoops, between you and the enemy at all times so that you cannot, cannot, cannot be mutated. Super important here, and it's super important in slime. I don't know if these guys will follow me from floor to floor. We're going to find out. Nope. Wow, dumped right next to a pan lord and friends, and that happens sometimes. Low EV, decent, well, okay AC. Call down Hellfire. Mm. It's not a very tough pan lord. Um, I have four blinking. I'd rather not burn them. What to do? What to do about this? What to do about this? Um, I could just start cleansing flaming. And this is, this is definitely, like I was saying before, one of those parts of the game where you want to... Really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, you know what? We are going to burn a scroll of blink. And I'm just going to leave. I don't, I don't need to fight all this crap. Ah, oh, shit. I got marked. And he came with me. They will come with you. We're marked on a new floor of pandemonium. It sucks. I just don't want to fight this guy. Um, okay. You're going to get the net, my friend. Down he goes. 
Let's, um, how many cancel do we have? We have a lot of cancel, so I'm going to drink one to get the mark effect off, and then afterwards, very important you do it in this order, I'm going to telly. So everything on the floor is coming to me, right? I telly somewhere else, and now it's all going there, and I'm not here, so I can just kind of explore and probably not run into too much trouble. This looks like an interesting area. Looks like where the Pan Lord might have been, but I don't see a portal, so it must not be. Remember, there's still a Pan Lord on this floor. We dragged one with us, basically. Fogging and shouting to get this Tormentor. Didn't have a chance to torment me. I'm just gonna auto explore, I guess. Oh, there it is. Wait for this Chaos Cloud to end, and then we'll take this portal. I really don't like Pandemonium on account of the fact that this is how it works. Um, it's so randomized, you could be in here for a very long time. Uh, and also, I've been dumped on Pan Lords twice in a row. Wow. Whew, wow, that's a tough Pan Lord, too. Andy has Tormentors around him. Super dangerous. Um, Quicksilver Bolt. Good old 60 damage. Metal Splinters. We'll be okay. Let's just, like most things, we're just going to Cleansing Flame this stuff to death. Then we'll swing on the Pan Lord and he dies. Nice little ruined gate. <laughs> These guys can't open it up and bother me. Let's just take this exit uh, to another, another region of the Pandemonium. Fog. Stopping the Hellion from being next to me. Take the Curing, take the Gold, and find another exit. I'm calling them exits. They're not actually exits. They're gateways. Um, exits take you straight out of the Abyss, or out of, out of Pandemonium, rather. We haven't seen a real exit yet. Here we go. Uh, shadowy figures dance across your vision. The mighty Pandemonium Lord Glorks of Locke is here. So this is sort of death-themed, kind of like Tartarus. Um, you'll see a lot of Executioner Demons in here, which are very fast guys. These guys, they can haste themselves, and they already attack super, super quickly for 10 and then 30 damage. If you have big defenses, they won't bother you too much. If you don't, they can be truly, truly horrifying. There's also going to be Curse Skulls here, which we've already fought. We're going to Cleansing Flame them to death. Whoa, what happened? Oh, my armor's 27 now. Okay. We'll train fighting axis dodging, I suppose. Before we would lignify to kill the curse skulls, but now we have cleansing at a really high level, so they'll just die to that typically. Hey, there's our boy, the Spider Man. Uh, Glork's Lock, Demon Lord of Darkness, a shadowy figure clothed in profound darkness. Wow, these descriptions seem downright lazy compared to the the hell ones. Ever taken an old 27 all skills? Yeah, I think I all you really have to do is like two ziggurats with a null to do that. I think it's um I think that's about the point where you get there. It's pretty fun. But you can go 27 skills on any uh any any character if you do enough ziggurats. <laughs> How much time do you have? Anyway, so this is Glork's Flock. He's got Miasma Breath, he's got Torment, he's got the spell on dead, which we don't care about because we're not undead, and he can summon executioners. What I like to do is I like to treat him like he is a new Shabti with Torment. I like to use Lignification. I like to... Um, I like to read a Fog. And then I like to just go to town on him. Oh, well, you can... If you want, you can net him first. And then swing. getting out of the net very quickly because uh, he's a very fast boy so he's getting a lot of attempts to get out of the net so we'll just cleanse and flame him to death. And he goes down pretty easy. Pretty cool looking little tile here. Kind of a Superman symbol. Grabbing the dark Dark rune. All right, uh, and then we'll just go out of the place. No reason to explore these floors, you know. Things will spawn infinitely in here, by the way, something you may not be used to from the rest of the game. Let's try the curing potion. Okay. Haven't been to this region of the abyss, but it's not a rune floor, so I don't care. Here we go. Uh, you sense a powerful magical presence. It is not pleased. The mighty pandemonium lord LeBron James resides here. He guards the magical rune of Sot. Okay. So 
so um, there's going to be... Wow, this dumped me on an island. That's obnoxious. I guess we'll just go fly. Be careful about flying near these uh, blizzard demons. They have airstrike, which makes you do more damage or take more damage while you're flying. So typically you wouldn't want to do that, but also titans have it too. Getting backspawned while stair dancing. <laughs> yeah, that was obnoxious when that was the case. So yeah, there's a lot of magical guys in here. Gotta watch out for these LCSs. I'm not too worried because I have big boy SH, but it can definitely happen. So I gotta keep my hit points relatively high to avoid problemos. And as you can see, I can get dumped basically anywhere on the floor when I'm when I'm going into a pan uh, portal and there's no way back up. Maybe probably it's a little more likely that you understand now why I don't like to do pan first because it can lead to these horribly dangerous situations that basically just don't happen in hell. We've been dumped onto pan lords two or three times now. We've been dumped pretty close to LeBron James here. There he is. There's LeBron James. Le LeBron. Lebanese. Lamo. Um, so here he is. He's a big blue eyeball man. He's got Conjure Ball Lightning. Um, if you don't have Arlek, you're going to have a bad time with him. He's got Tornado, which can move you around. It's actually a level 9 spell that the caster, that, uh, that the player can get if you have enough air magic. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just kind of does crap loads of damage to you every turn. He can heal himself. He can blink range. He doesn't have very many hit points. But he does have Glaciate, which does just a hilarious amount of damage to you, especially if you are right next to him. So if you don't have RC, ideally RC++, but uh, at least RC, if you don't have that, you're going to take stupendous amounts of damage from Glaciate. This guy has a description, stoic and inscrutable. LeBron James is an ancient demon infamous for his mastery of basketball. Rumored to be the most learned being in the halls of the NBA, he is at times sought out by mortal ballers who offer their souls in exchange for the secrets of the ballin. Lacking the terrible wrath present in most ballers, Lom Lebon LeBron James single eye instead hides a cold, impartial hoop skill. Okay, um, let's kill him. I'm going to, shit, I only have two haste left. Do I want to try to do this without haste? I think I'll just might, and we're going to try to do this without haste, because I only have two left. I will burn my holy word. Uh, this will do a little damage to him and make him take less actions. It's kind of like hasting. Uh, I shouldn't make angels, because they'll just die in the tornado and the glaciate really, really quickly. Ah, you know what I can do? I can do Sack of Spiders and proceed to not get any Ghost Moths. Come on, bro. I have 27 evokes. Net. You know what? I'm going to make Sack again. There we go. All right. Order them to attack. This Ghost Moth should anti-magic the hell out of him. There we go. Check it out. Your Ghost Moth stares at Lom LeBron James. LeBron James magic leaks into the air. So that means that... He's going to be casting less stuff. Sometimes when he casts, it'll just be like, I don't know how to do that. Wow, that's a Glaciate. Okay. Let's... Okay, let's do this. Cleansing Flame. We're getting a little low on hit points, but he dies. Very good. That was a little sloppy. Um, we should have probably waited. We knew this was the, it was the end chamber by the way it looked. We probably should have made a bunch of Ghost Moths with the Sack of Spiders beforehand. You're not going to get Ghost Moss, by the way, unless you have absurdly high evokes. In fact, it really doesn't seem to happen with any regularity until you get pretty much maxed. Don't worry, LeBron will choke in the clutch, bro. <laughs> he's he's kind of... He's, he's, he's what you might call a young Bala. I guess he's kind of an old baller at this point. He's been around for a while. All right, so we got dumped into the end of this floor, so we're going to kind of have to explore backwards. He's got a bit of a magical fortress here. We only have one more pan floor to do. Well, one more rune pan floor. Who knows? Who knows how long it'll take to get there? There's an abyssal exit. Hey, here we go. 
Okay, this is Holy Pan. Um, you can tell because it looks all silly. Um, the man is 35. It's about as old as Bala, Bala gets. That's true. Yeah, man, it's sad. It's, it's sad that uh, our bodies give out so soon, but yeah, 35 is about it. Alright, I switched to chopping because everything in here is like an angel or something. I'm going to magic map just to show what this looks like. It'll look the same every time, basically. You'll have a big fortress in the center where there's a, something called a seraph. You'll have a temple here with some devas in it. Back here there's going to be like a pearl dragon, which is sort of like a holy dragon with a big hoard of gold. A bunch of loot all over the place. Usually there'll be exits from pan over there and some more over here. Um... These are very unique monsters you're going to see almost nowhere else in the in the game. There will always be a demonic rune here if you haven't seen it yet. Otherwise, there's just going to be loot, and that will be back here. This is the main loot pile. I'm not going to do this whole floor. Ordinarily, I would, but I don't I don't need to. Um, these holy clouds don't do anything to me because I'm worshiping TSO. But yeah, Ophans will summon those around you. They'll do bolts of fire. Cherubs will just basically might their allies and do damage by attacking you with their crossbows. Their flaming swords. I go in here, we're going to see the holy equivalent of a pan lord, a seraph. You would think that because I'm worshipping the most holy god, these guys would not bother me, but nope. Six-winged servant of the good gods, of the highest rank of angelic hosts. Its eyes burn with divine fire. They summon allies, they do pretty good damage. Um, they also absorb the damage that their allies take, so you can, funnily enough, kill him by uh, just killing his, his bros. And it works out pretty well. I gotta be careful in here, because as you can see, I'm not healing when I kill stuff, because these are not demons. It's also why I switched to my chopping axe. Manual of air magic, don't care about that. Evasion, don't care. See invisible, don't care. Suppose I will try this ringmail on. It's not bad, but it makes my AC garbage, even more garbage than it is, so we'll wear chainmail. Uh, yeah, I don't care about the loot. We're going to take this. This is the actual exit that leads out of Pandemonium. So if you see one of these and you still want to do more pan, you should still leave it. You know, because look what I can do. I can, first of all, I can get a nice, get a nice rest on, and then I can just go right back in. Boom, new floor. And I see uh, it says the branch contains the fire rune of Zot, but that doesn't mean that the rune of Zot is here. We still have more floors to visit, sadly. We'll know. We'll know if it's if it's the fiery floor with uh, a young man named Sarabov, who is arguably the highest damage enemy in the game. That's not it. That's not it. See what I mean about this taking a long time? This could really, really be revamped. They just won't do it, you know? I, I personally think that Pandemonium should should just give you all the rune floors immediately. Pass into a different region of Pandemonium. We immediately get marked. I guess we'll cancel that off and then telly. You don't have to do that every time, but I like to. If I have a bunch of cancels, I'll typically do that. I dropped my identifier. I'd really like to find out what those gloves are. But I have to wear them, unfortunately. Because <laughs> I don't have any identifies in my inventory. Let's go up here. And, hmm, plus invis and fire resist. No way. We can put the gauntlets of war for the sleigh and the extra AC. I've already got tons of fire resist. There's another floor. Let's go there. Uh, this is not it. This is not what we're looking for. Just always take a look at what you're dealing with with these pan lords because they can be very tough. This one has a lot of AC and almost no evasion. So what we're going to do... Also, they have different resists and uh, vulnerabilities. He does not have resistance to fire. He's actually susceptible to cold, although we can't really take advantage of that. However, we can totally lamp a fire on this dude. Boom! Resistant to electricity, unfortunately. Let's just burn an acid in his general direction. I hate the fact that there's this hellion here, but that's okay. Just swing on him. Since he was a relatively easy pan lord, I'm happy to fight him because I know he's going to have a portal next to him. And here we go. We pass into a different region of pandemonium. Searing heat 
pours from the walls and floors of this place. The mighty pandemonium lord, Serebov, resides here. Guards the fiery rune of Zot. I'd magic map probably if I could, but I don't have any because I'm foolish and I didn't buy them. Uh, so we're just going to basically explore this floor and I'll slow down as soon as something dangerous shows up. Cool, there's an exit right here. Too bad we are going to the abyss anyway. Do, do, do. Typically, Serebov is going to be in a little fortress. Sometimes there are two fortresses on the floor, and one of them just kind of has loot in it. But looks like he's right here. Look how cool he looks. I love this tile. This might be my favorite tile in the game. I like how his sword looks on it. Serebov, Demon Lord of Fire and Steel, a violent and wrathful demon. Serebov appears as a giant humanoid covered in shining golden armor and wielding a huge twisted sword. Um, he's got Iron Shot. He does big boy damage with that. He's got Firestorm, which probably does the most damage of any attack in the game. Does fire damage, though, so if you have RF+, plus, it's quite good. 8d17 slash 8d16, I think... Huh, that's what a weird formula. Um, Iron Shot can do up to 3d36. Just assume he can do like 100 damage to you and you won't be wrong. Uh, especially if you have RF+. Plus. Summon Greater Demon, he can summon stuff like Brimstone Fiends that can torment you. Very dangerous stuff. Um, he can also haste himself for double the Firestorm, double the Iron Shot action. Not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to evoke Fogu. We're going to drink Agi, we're going to drink Might. Typically I would haste here, but I'm trying to save my hastes for the orb run. I'm stupid and I forgot to wear my Holy Axe. Let's put that back on. Uh, let's start making some angels. Okay, hold on. I'm going to start Cleansing Flaming. Actually, he got here a little quicker than I would have liked. Let's, uh, let's Divine Shield to block the... Damn, we didn't... With 51 SH, we did not block his Sword of Serapov. When he hits you with the Sword of Serapov, he's going to burn away your fire resist by one. Uh, it does not stack, but losing a point of fire resistance is pretty brutal. He's hasted and I'm not. That's really, really bad. Um, yeah, that's really bad. I'm going to have to burn a haste for this. I should have done that first thing. Derp. Okay, let's cheese him down with Sack of Spiders, I think. We didn't get a ghost moth, but that's okay. He's entangled in a web. You cut Serebov into ribbons. Serebov convulses. That's right, boy. Serebov drinks a potion. Serebov is healed. You cheater. All right, so I'd like to throw a net on him, but he's immune to nets. The only reason I was able to entangle him was because of the sack. Um, so why don't we sack again? So that's probably true, rogue shenanigans, but you never know. He evades the web, things crawl out, but we did get our ghost moth. Let's order to attack. We should have two ghost moths. So if one of them starts getting a nice anti-magic effect on him... Wow, look at that attack. You slice Serebov, you convulses, you headbutt Serebov. I even got good damage on the headbutt. Damn, dude. He's just not doing much. I'm cool with this. Sometimes they don't do much. Got him. Seems kind of cheesy the way I'm using my uh, using my sack of spiders so much. But I mean, it's that good. It's one of the best items in the game if you've got high evocations. It's almost worthless if you don't have very decent evocations. But man, even even five points of evokes turns it into something that's pretty much worth using in a lot of fights. Now, that could, have, that could have possibly gone worse, I will admit. Um, ways that it could have gone worse, uh, he could have Firestormed just like once and cleared out all my allies, and that would have really been obnoxious. I may have had to have run away. Don't think that because it's going well that it has to go well. Um, we very much could have had to like teleport out of that, blink out of that, just escape and try again. Definitely not impossible. Cheese spiders should be a monster. Hee <laughs> hee. Webs of string cheese. <laughs> the food dungeon. All right, I went and I went ahead and checked his little his little area because these little these little tiny runes can have decent items in them. One of them had a box of beasts, and there it is. The rune, the fiery rune of Zot. Ba ba boom. 
Okay, I could look for an exit to the abyss, but I don't need to. I've got all the runes of this place, and there happens to be a real exit. Let's, so let's just take that after we grab this potion. Ba Boom. Pass through a gate. One rune left to get, and it's going to be an easy one at this point in the game. Typically, I leave abyss till the end, because um, there's not much in the way of loot there unless you're farming it for a long time. And uh, also, you almost have to go through it to get out of pan. I, we just got lucky and found a real exit, but typically it's easier to find an abyssal exit. So what I did was I control F abyss, and I and I uh, there's a portal that will spawn in depths, and we just we, we voluntarily went in here. And the way abyss works is you can get sent here by the banishing spell. You can get sent here with certain miscast effects if you try to cast magic you're not ready for yet. You can get sent here by distortion weapons, and you can get sent here by going here voluntarily, which is what we did. There are five floors of the Abyss. Whenever you go here voluntarily, you will start on Abyss 1. Every turn that you spend in here, there's a chance you get sent deeper. You can also find portals, like this one, which lead deeper into the Abyss. As you kill things in here, you'll gain experience as normal, but also once you get a certain amount of experience, you will get a portal spawning beneath your feet. The first one will be going downstairs, or upstairs rather. It'll, it'll get you out of the abyss entirely, actually, no matter what floor you're on. And every subsequent portal, if you ignore that one, will send you downstairs, unless you are on Abyss 5, the deepest layer, and then all portals will send you out. Uh, some unique, relatively unique enemies in here. This is a Wretched Star, and we're going to use that standard trick. I walked up here, he flashed at me, he did this thing called... Corrupting Pulse, it's really obnoxious because it gives you what's called a transient mutation. I have int minus four until I gain some experience. So what I did, the standard play I did was I saw him, I said, oh no, I had really good positioning though, so I could just like take a step back, rest, and then just swing into him. I should be using chopping, this is not considered a demon. If you're ever not sure if something's demonic or not, there's two things you can do. One, you can just swing on it and see if you see... Uh, if you hit it and it doesn't say they convulse with your holy weapon, that means it's not going to affect it. Or you could look it up with the bot, because silly, silly enough, you cannot look it up in-game. Um, at question mark, wretched star, wretched star, non-living. just says non-living. It doesn't say demonic, so it's not undead. It's not demonic. It's not going to be affected by your weapon, by your holy weapon. All right, sometimes you'll be suddenly pulled into a different region of the abyss, just randomly press enter, and you're just sort of sent to a new region of the abyss. The area, you'll notice the map is sort of changing all the time, getting pulled all the time, and like even what I just explored a minute ago is kind of being disappeared, you know? Like look, watch my mini map as I travel. Notice how things are going black. It's because this place is basically chaos incorporated so the abyssal rune can only be found on floor three or lower of the abyss if you want to get the rune the safest thing you can do is generally to try to farm it up on abyss three rather than going deeper because the deeper you go the more enemies will show up these masses are really dangerous they smite you their description is terrible their entry here is terrible it doesn't really tell you what is going on you can read this and have a good guess but the way this works is if there are, I think, four or more of them, they can paralyze you. So you really want to make sure there's not four of them on the screen at any given time. It might be five, I'm not positive, but assume four, unless you look it up for yourself. They will split into more of themselves, is the thing. So once there's four, that's that's a big problem. And then the paralyze, if they get, like, I think another, I think about seven of them, the paralyze will last even longer and they can smite you with that crap from anywhere on the screen, so expect to be taking damage anytime one of them is around, and expect to be paralyzed if there's a four. Oh, what is this crap? We're only on Abyss 2, so we can't find the rune. I got teleported into a swacky little vault. Oh, there's a way down. Cool. Okay, now we can find the rune, potentially. There's a gateway leading out. You'll find these randomly sometimes, but we don't want to go out, do we? We want to keep looking for the rune this thing. I probably should have fogged against it. I'm playing a little more reckless than I normally would be. Oh, Profane Servitor. It's just a big pile of damage. Nothing special about that guy. The Umbra, I guess, but that just makes you miss more. Makes everything miss more, actually. 
These Raiju can be a bit dangerous if you get sent in here earlier than you'd like to be here. They do electric damage, they blink around, they're like shock dogs basically. Elephants can be in here, quite, quite dangerous. Okay, there's our experience portal. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, so once you gain enough experience, it says the substance of the abyss twists violently and a gateway leading out appears, but we don't want to take that because we're looking, we're looking for that, uh, that rune. But remember, that's your guaranteed way out so you won't be in here forever hoping that you find an exit randomly. Um, so if you get trapped in here, one, like if you get sent here early and you don't want to be in here, one, one potential way out is to go hunting, is to go hunting for monsters and kill, kill as many as possible, even if it's stuff that you can't safely kill yet, maybe use consumables to do it. Chalk dolls. What? Did I, did I say that? I don't know what that means. What is that? Anyway, um... Check this out. We know the rune is nearby. How do I know this? This place is so chaotic and hard to see what the hell's even going on. How do I know that the rune's nearby? Because these wacky little floor tiles, check it out. They look special, right? It's a hint. This is one of those things that unfortunately is not revealed uh, in inside the game, you know? But eventually, if you interact with the community, somebody will tell you this. These special little floor tiles mean that the rune is nearby. Yeah, I don't know, JF Karen. Maybe I misspoke and said something. I'd... Something, something bullshit spoilery. Hmm. I was saying a lot of, a lot of crap. <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying even five seconds ago. I know I was talking about these floor tiles. Uh, something, something bullshit spoilery. As to why we can't know about the abyss tile in the game. Oh. No, I'm just... I'm just saying that the tiles are spoiler. There's no, there's, there's nothing, you know, you would think that if you X feed over this, it would tell you something. Oh, you're saying why it's not there. See, that doesn't make sense because it literally is spoilery. The fact that this exists, the fact that these tiles are only seen near rune vaults, that's the definition of spoilery. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. This is Elephant Island. You're going to see a bunch of elephants, elephants, and uh, dire elephants. Yeah. I found that not just the DCSS devs, but like roguelike devs in general will just sort of bullshit an answer as to why they want to do what they want to do. And I would respect them about five million times more if they would just say, F you, I want to do what I want. Because it would be more, it would be more honest, wouldn't it? You know, um, because that's the actual thing going on here. It's just they, they, they kind of do whatever they want on a whim and they pretend that they have a plan, but they don't really, uh, there's no real consistency there in most cases. Um, because if there was, then perhaps they'd be making money off of their game. Anyway, uh, okay, so we open up this door on Elephant Island. We see that there is a spatial maelstrom here. We need to be real careful because he can teleport you around when he hits you. Um, so can the little vortexes. This maelstrom can actually eat through the stone walls, so don't expect them to keep him contained. Um... Yeah, no, rogue shenanigans, I agree entirely. I mean, I have no respect for the DCSS devs because they pretend there's this sort of grand overarching plan, um, overarching plan that, that just kind of tells you this is the path for DCSS, but it's like anybody, it's really insulting to people's intelligence, I think, because it's like anybody who's paying even a little bit of attention can tell, they know better, you know, they, they know better. Uh, let's make an angel, just kind of put that in the way. I want this maelstrom dead. The rune is in here, by the way. Um, it's sitting on top of this altar of Lagonu, who is the god of the abyss. Yeah, I really want to... Um, once you find the rune, you should get get the rune as fast as possible so you don't really get shifted away. Yeah, that's, that's the idea here. Um, I don't want to be hit by this maelstrom because it could send me anywhere else in the abyss. And if that happens... I will eventually find another vault with an abyssal rune in it, but that's annoying and I don't want to deal with that. So let's just make some more angels and maybe they'll clear some of this crap out for me. I'm going to swing. I'm going to swing. I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to start cleansing flaming. Are these things immune to fire? Yeah, they're resistant to fire. Uh, nevertheless, let's... 
lamp, it'll do something. I'd like to just blink there and grab the rune, but I know that these spatial vortexes could teleport me if I do that. There's there's infinite uh, abyssal runes in Atsume, but once you pick one up, you can't find one ever again. Okay, cool. Let's blink. Blink scroll. Oop. Grab it, and there we go. It cannot be stolen from me. Once you find the rune, it is much more likely for you to find exits. So I will now use a flight potion to get over this lava. Take this exit that I immediately found. And here we are in Depths 2 again. Hooray! Alright, runes of Zot. 15 collected. We have all the runes, but we haven't won, have we? Because we have to do what's called the orb run. Typically, I would do something now called uh, Zen Swapping. Should I show that off? I'm not going to show that off. Not this time. Um, I'm just going to do the orb run with TSO. It would be more optimal for me to do it with Zen, but I'm going to do it with TSO just to maybe demonstrate some of the tougher things that can happen in the orb run if something tough does happen. So we're done, right? Except we got to get the orb, which we left here, if you recall, under Trog, back when we were a big, angry Trog man. So here's the orb of Zod. As soon as I pick this up, uh, is the orb run the same or harder when you have more runes? Sadly, it's the same. It would be interesting, I think, if the more runes you had, the more demons showed up. But, um, yeah, no, they, uh, <laughs> they, they uh, didn't, didn't put that in the game. No, it's all the same. Sometimes orb runs are easy, sometimes they're hard. It's all pretty much random. So as soon as I pick this up, if you take the runes but don't kill the extended bosses, they can show up mad. Only pan lord, not not hell lords. Only named pan lords, or uh, unique pan lords. Hey, what's up, frozen zerker? You're here for the orb run. What's the point of runes? You get more points if you get the runes. Um, mostly just for bragging rights. Uh, the extended part of the game, people rarely do it because it's honestly quite a slog, quite quite a long time. Um, the let me see about this. The the um, you need three runes to enter Zot, so you gotta do that. You gotta get at least three. You need one rune to enter Vault, so you need at least one to go in there. Um, the thing the thing about that is, like, you literally cannot finish the game if you don't get at least runes, uh, three runes, so can be meaningful. Um, anyway, so, so we left this orb here. As soon as we pick it up, demons are gonna start following us, and, uh, this little orb effect that you see in Zot, that, remember this, the thing that kept me from controlled blinking with my scrolls, and makes me take a long time to teleport? It's gonna follow me everywhere. So what we're gonna do, and this is almost always gonna be true with a fully explored Zot 5, we're gonna cast, we're gonna use scroll of blink, right? And we're gonna, we're gonna wait seven turns. I have the period key here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slam it seven times. One, two, three, four seven times. Uh, usually it takes like three turns to telly. In here that's delayed a lot. So we waited seven turns. We're going to pick up the orb. And what does it say? Uh, you pick up the orb of Zot. The orb lets out a hideous shriek. Oh no. The lords of pandemonium are not amused. Beware. Now all you have to do is get back out of the dungeon. Take a few steps. It's taken longer than I thought. And the telly lands us somewhere where we would very much like to be. Very cool. So what I'm going to do, here's a little trick, Control g for fast travel, dungeon, D, I'm actually going to press 0. We're going to floor 0. That means it's going to try to send me on the most optimal route to take me uh, to the actual exit of the dungeon, the Dead Lords of Pandemonium. No, there's still infinite Pan Lords, just, uh, just not the named ones. LeBron James is dead, Sarabov is dead, Manoleg's dead, and Glork's Flock is dead. All right, so the name of the game on the pan... Uh, on the orb run is, if something is faster than you, you gotta fight it. Okay, so these orb guardians that spawn, you pretty much have to fight those. Um, this executioner, I can try to walk away from him, but he catches me, I'm gonna pretty much have to fight him. Anytime the fight's over, I control G and press enter to fast travel back where I was going, which in this case is the, uh, the zeroth floor of dungeon. I will try to walk around these hell hogs, they pretty much follow me, so we're gonna swing on them and kill them. If you ever need to rest on the orb run, I'm missing four hit points here, so why not? Press five, I do it on a staircase. Ideally, a staircase up. This way, uh, this way, if something shows up, I can just kind of go up and escape it. 
Fast travel. Shadow demons can be dangerous on the orb run. He's going to be able to summon Zot enemies because we're in Zot right now. I'm just going to walk away from these dudes. Sure, the orb guardian is faster than me. But, um... I was far enough away that I could make it. A brimstone fiend. Huge danger. If you have digging wands, you pre-dig shortcuts. Yeah, you can do that. That's a thing. Although there's not very many digging wands anymore. Let's, um... Let's acid this dude. He's very dangerous because, remember, he can hellfire and he can torment. So we really want to kill him as fast as possible. If he had spawned a little further away from me, I might have read a fog scroll or evoked fog for my for my cloak um but instead he spawned really close and so did this one let's switch to our holy wrath and let's just swing on his ass finish him with a cleansing flame most things that spawn are going to be undead or demon so you might as well if you have a holy weapon you probably should be using that assuming it's a good type good base type Dungeon 15. Hello. Pan lords can spawn on the orb run. So, this one is what you might call a warrior pan lord. He doesn't have any spells. Uh, he has pretty good defenses, extremely high evasion. No AC, though. Or low AC. Uh, yeah, that would be cool, JF Karen. I agree. Although, I think it's mostly optimized already. Then you can always just manually take the path. Anyway, so this guy is immune to negative energy, very resistant to fire, resistant to electricity and poison, susceptible to cold, and he's a warrior panlord because he has no spells and does enormous damage. 57 plus poison touch. But I'm not worried about him, because I'm good. I'm good at killing guys with... <laughs> high EV and no AC by just cleansing flaming him to death. Hell Sentinel. Okay, great opportunity to fog and just walk away. Fog and just walk away. Fog. <laughs> now, like, that would have burned three fog scrolls under normal circumstances, so of course we probably wouldn't have done that. What we would have done is burned, like, one fog scroll and then hasted and then walked away and he wouldn't have caught us. Um, but I have the... Because I have this dumb cloak, I can do what I want. Hello! It's M muggy odd. Muggy odd. Has a mantis body and a large fungus growing from its neck. Oh man, I hate it when I get a large fungus on my neck. Uh, he's only got Bolt of Cold. I'm not worried about him. Big AC, but low EV. Let's, uh, let's acid him and then just swing him to death. No super dangerous pan lords yet. Sometimes you can get... Sometimes, sometimes you can get, um, like a Silence Pan Lord with Glaciate or Firestorm. Like, they can spawn with literally anything, so it's very dangerous. Or can be. Passwall on the Orb Run? Yeah, Passwall's pretty good uh, on the Orb Run. I typically don't like Passwall, but if you're going to use it anywhere, the Orb Run is a pretty great place for it. Incredibly dangerous spell to use, though, um, but I'll, I'll talk about that later, I'm sure, in a casting tutorial. Anyway, there's your, uh, there, there is your tutorial for Extended uh, on a maybe probably the most straightforward Extended run you're ever going to have when you switch to TSO on a MIBI. Staircase leading out of the dungeon. The staircase leads back out of the dungeon. The staircase leading out of the dungeon. Climbing these stairs will end your quest, whether you carry the orb run with you, carry the orb with you or not. Well, we have everything. Just make a little uh, make a little note with the colon uh, key, gg, rosecrypto.com, buy my book, Chateau Cascade. Really though, you should buy my book. I wrote a fantasy novel and published it, and if you go to rosecrypto.com, you'll see a link to the Amazon page about it. Alright, we've escaped. Let's see how our score is. Ah, 20, 22nd best crawler. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get more... Um, you get more points based on how many runes you picked up and the number of turns that you spent in the game. We were pretty damn slow with less than 100,000 turns, but that's still pretty slow. GG, CC late, DVA 13. Thank you, thank you. Am I planning more of this kind of content? Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, I, on DungeonCrawlStoneSoup.com, I am 
putting up guides. I'm going to make a written guide to the MIBI, and I'm going to link... Like, if you go there right now, the guide is up, but the guide is uh, incomplete. It pr basically is just a funny little picture I drew and uh, and a link to the to the, the video series. So um, that's going to have some actual text to it soon, where I explain kind of in text forms, because people find that stuff easier to digest sometimes than watching hours of content purporting to teach you about DCSS. I mean, it's a lot easier when there's just like a page. Um, 27 placed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I did. Huh. Yeah, no, I do have... Well, what happened is... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how much I want to get into this, but basically I, I had a guide up on UV4's site, but he threw a tantrum and deleted it because he was mad at me. Um, so I decided to put my Null Wizard guide up on my own site. And um, it's kind of a weird thing if you ask me to to try to delete people's guides off the internet... <laughs> you know, it's because you're upset at them. It's like, screw the DCSS player base. I don't want them to have information, you know. But um, I just decided, like, I have this domain. I have DungeonCrawlStoneSoup.com, so why not Why not turn it into a nice site for guides and fan art and things like that? You know, so I've been, uh, I've been cultivating that a little bit, and it looks a lot better these days. Getting some, some uh, good stuff done there. And I think that once I get a few more guides on there, it's going to start looking really good. And I, I'm, I'd be happy to host other people's guides there as well, as long as they're as long as they're solid, you know. <laughs> Trying to be helpful, not on my watch. Yeah, basically, a video assistant to the null would be neat. Yeah, I have a, I do have a video series for the null wizard, but it's the thing that's linked off that is not particularly tutorially. It's just kind of me playing a null wizard, and I talk about what I'm doing to some degree, but I'm, I'm sure I go off topic 20 million times, but, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I guess I always do that, you know. Anyway, I'm going to eat some of these pistachios and maybe like a burger or something, and I might lift, but I tell you, uh, I think I'm not done streaming for the night. I think I'm going to probably do some Dota later, possibly with Wesley, if I can convince him to tolerate my dog shit play. I am very bad at Dota. It's like, take how good I am at DCSS, and I'm equally that bad at Dota. Um, but I am having fun with it. If a food if a food branch was ever added, its boss would be called the Pan... Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, I'll fork DCSS, and I'll make the food branch. I like it. No, that actually makes sense. Check it out. You could have, like, uh, what, it, what it should be is a portal vault, okay? And it should be, like, the Orcish Kitchens. You know, like a special Bailey, basically, that is the Orcish Kitten, the or or Orcish Kittens? No, Orcish Kitchens. And the Pan Lord is just a big orc with, like, a frying pan and a chef's hat. And he has, like, fire-based attacks where he, you know, he, he uh, grills you. Like the dude in uh, Breath of Fire 2, for the people who are old enough to, uh, to have played that game. Orcish Kittens is an entirely different idea. Yeah, for sure. Hello, hello. Sorry about that. I just pulled my mic. I got so excited that I, I shifted by like one inch and my leg just kind of pulled the uh, the microphone <laughs> pulled pulled the uh, the microphone power cable like directly out of it. So um, that's that's cool. I was done anyway. Uh, just didn't want to end on an awkward silent note. A roided rage over the prospect of going to lift. I yeah, that's maybe maybe. Anyway, uh, I should probably go do that. I have some, I have some curls to do, bros, some concentration curls. So that'll be it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, but until next time, I am signing out. Did you know that there are many ways that you can help support this channel? Read about them on rosecrypto.com support. At Rose Crypto, you can learn all about cool things like the Brave web browser, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.